Welcome, everybody, and a good afternoon almost at the next round of the DNLS of the Digital Nürburgring Endurance Championship presented by Goodyear. We are back at the Nürburgring Nordschleife for the TÜV Rheinland three hour race now, and we are here in the Qualifying already, so the qualifying is already running in the background in the sea uh, at the famous Nordsch Life uh, with uh, quite high temperatures uh, on track with uh, 38 degrees centigrade, mostly cloudy, uh, which uh, makes it more interesting on the track um, as we had some clear sky the last uh, couple of rounds. And um, yeah, we will continue the uh, action on the track for the next couple of hours uh, starting at one o'clock with the start of the three-hour race. We had some action in uh, the last races with uh, the winning uh, teams uh, in the classes and uh, overall and uh, for, uh, for that we uh, will have in a couple of minutes, a little highlight clip. But uh, first of all, uh, welcome everybody here for that stream once again, while we see in the background the cars uh, on the track and a new face on the track, the BMW M4 GT3 as a prototype, which uh, came into iRacing in the last patch. And we welcome them here. So that means the Z4 BMW is not in, uh, in uh, the DNS Championship happening anymore. And we are here um, having a look on the Keep On Racing BMW M4 GT3. A new car, as I said, a new car which is not on the real track yet. So BMW is developing that car uh, both in sim racing and also on the real track, while we have another new entry, the Lamborghini Huracan uh, GT3 Evolution. Uh, we see here uh, as well on the track. So two new entries or two new cars available in the sim and also here in the DNLS, which uh, makes it more interesting and a uh, more mixed field with the uh, uh, Lamborghini, with the BMW, with the new cars, with the Mercedes AMG GT3 as well. And for sure, the Audi R8 LMS um, also still here in the GT3 class. While we have Core Sim Racing, a little bit, a little bit in trouble here um, in uh, the um, area of Hatzenbach. And um, yeah, so we are very much looking forward to the upcoming race, uh, what will happen to the new cars. We have a BOP, uh, I will let you know uh, later on. And uh, in that BOP, um, we have um, yeah, some adjustments to these cars. But first of all, let's have a look what happened to uh, in the last DNLS race, because um, in, uh, in there, something uh, or some of the action really much happened and we will have a look back to that in uh, a little overview showing for you now. In the beginning uh, we had the BMWs in front. So we had the model racing team in front of the DS competition. And uh, also in uh, the Cup 2 class, uh, we had uh, the guys in front. We know they are fast usher racing in the beginning, right there. Uh, but also in uh, the SP10 class, the, uh, the Cobra Sim Racing car, UDG, Scuderia as well. And also we had uh, Team RSO in front in the class, uh, in the lowest class, in the SP3T class. We had in front in the beginning the housing felt while we see, we saw, um, yeah, in, right in the beginning already, the uh, fight again from uh, Mal Racing Team and the S competition. We had that in the NMS race number one as well. 
both of the cars, both of the BMWs were fighting for a couple of minutes. In FB3T, a, a close fight in the in the front of the field between Heusingfeld and also uh, the Sim RC guys. Then big trouble for Mahler Racing Team with a hardware problem from uh, Dominic Steib um, uh, exiting the pit lane. Then big trouble also uh, for the Eibach car in area Fl uh, Flansgarten. And yeah, right in the end of the race, um, a double pit stop from uh, SB3T class leaders. Then big trouble also for Diddy Chiusa, who hit the barrier very hard. So unlucky race for them once again for the HRT Haupt Racing Team uh, in area of Moot Corner. In the class SP10, we had the close fight. Udici, Scuderia, Team RSO and Core Sim Racing were fighting for almost the whole race and the decision was made in the last couple of corners. Winner was a BS competition in front of a strong Team Heusingfeld in their Mercedes AMG GT3. And last but not least, we had a Team BMW Bank on the third place. That is what happened in uh, the uh, last race of uh, the DNLS. And now we are back here at the Nürburgring Endurance Championship, the digital version of it, presented by Goodyear. We are at the area of Carousel, having a close, a very close look to the new BMW M4 GT3 of Keep On Racing with number 69. And the car looks promising. And as we saw that also in a couple of other uh, racing series on the iRacing service, we uh, can uh, very much look forward to that car while we uh, see here the BS competition car. So all the entries coming from the BMW Z4 are now entries of the uh, M4 GT4 and as I said we had a bulletin number 5 uh, which uh, tells us that the fuel capacity of the M4 is lowered by 2% uh, so it's now 98% only um, that they are equaled with the uh, Mercedes AMG GT3 and the Huracan and also the power adjustment is made uh, or is adjusted by minus 1% to 99 last but not least um, some additional weight was added to uh, the BMW as well which means it's a 30 kilogram um, in the end which is added to the car so that's the BOP for the BMW and uh, let's see what uh, what is how is how it is affecting that car uh, during the next three hours. And um, yeah, we are uh, as I say in the qualifying. All of the cars are on their uh, fast laps, um, so that's why we see, do not see any uh, proper times on the screen now. But what looks promising, as we know that BS Competition is one of the strongest teams, or even the strongest team at the moment. I keep on racing. They are um, right at the bumper of the car, showing here the flashlights and uh, in the, the keep on racing car we have um, Gabriele Piana and uh, Vasilios Belezziotis I, I hope you know what I mean um, we have them in the car and uh, Piana is doing the uh, qualifying now as um, the pro driver has to do the qualifying and also the start of the race so Piana is uh, sending it and uh, looking very strong. While we here, we have Williams Esports with Sami Matitrogen and Alex Arana in their BMW car as well. It looks it looks strange a little bit to it. It, it looks very strange to the um, when they are not driving in their set four or Audi R8. But um, yeah, so uh, now um, let's let's have a look how they will end up in uh, the qualifying and in the uh, 
qualifying here at of the three hour race. At the wheel, that's Sami Mati Drogen at the moment for the Williams Esports guys. And they are running strong with four minutes to go. So it's the last lap of their qualifying. A lot of BMWs entries we see here. And um, as I say, we have the Lamborghini Huracan and the BMW M4 GT3 prototype in the race, as well as the Mercedes AMG GT3. So um, Trogen is coming back into pit lane, getting some new fresh rubber to go for one last shot out onto the track as they are, like in the real world, uh, they are allowed to use the last corner onto start and finish straight to go uh, or to have a shot on their fast lap. BS competition leaving the pit lane. And now we will see in a couple of minutes who is the fastest in the third round of the DN. LS. So here they go once again. Cora Sim Racing in their Lamborghini. Williams also out on the track once again. And uh, while they go for their next shot, we can have a look on the actual standings uh, where BS Competition, the number 89 car uh, with in the last uh, rounds Laureen Heinrich and uh, Rainer Talva they are leading the championship by 18.89 points which is calculated in because of the um, um, the amount of um, of cars participating and so on so um, it's quite a, a kind of um, yeah difficult calculation you have to do um, so that's why it's 18.89 points in front of uh, Team BMW Bank. So last year's winner of the championship. And in front of the 101 Mercedes-AMG Team HRT Heusingfeld, uh, the second-placed car in last round of the DNLS. So, and all of these, they are separated by three points only. So 18 point uh, something is a BM, a BS, then BMW Bank is 16.6 and 15.5 is um, Heusingfeld. And we are now on board, or we see here the team, uh, BMW team Great Britain, which is um, the entry of uh, Jesse Crone and Alessandro Bico. So they are running for that car. And here, uh, the uh, team BMW Bank with Bruno Spengler uh, sending it through the last corner for having a shot on the now final lap of the uh, qualifying. And... That is BS competition. That's the leading car of the championship with Laurin Heinrich behind the wheel going now not into pit lane. <laughs> so that, that was kind of that was kind of interesting move he did. It seems that he goes into pit lane, but then he decided to go back um, into the last corner um, for another shot. Uh, here that's uh, again a team a BMW Great Britain Jesse Grohn Jesse Crone is the driver at the moment the pro driver of the car and he's sending it now onto the Nordschleife area Hocheichen going to the area of uh, Quittelbacher Höhe in a couple of seconds, then Flugplatz, Schwedenkreuz, Arenberg. So that's the corners. Now 
Now he's sending it uh, to the area of, as I say, Schwedenkreuz. And here we go. We stay on the with a focus on the BMW team Great Britain, Tracy Crone. While at the moment we see in, uh, so I can update you. We see in qualifying at the moment, it's a team uh, BS competition. It's team BS competition number 89 leading the uh, the standings in front of team BMW Bank in front of Male Racing Team and fourth position is the Manfilter Team HTP Winward Haupt Racing Team Heusingfeld in fifth then in front of this car uh, we just switched uh, in front of uh, uh, BMW Team Great Britain. While we are on board here with the with the cars on a track, let's have a look back and into the future of the series as we are in halfway of the uh, calendar of this year's uh, season. Um, as you see, we had the H&R three-hour race uh, in November and in December, the Male three-hour race. Now we are at the TÜV Rheinland three-hour race of uh, the uh, Digital Nürburgring Endurance Championship. There are two more to come in February and in March um, and um, with the Nemex three-hour race and the new partner of the, the NLS uh, Lego is a new partner, um, a new partnership uh, has been taken, um, uh, which is uh, quite interesting. And um, as they are building these cars, we see on the track here uh, in real life with Lego. Um, so uh, it's kind of interesting. So you should stay um, for, or you should um, mark that in your calendar for the uh, February and March uh, edition of the the NLS. Now we are again here with Haupt Racing Team Bildstein. They had to switch a little bit drivers as uh, some of them, or most of them, of their pro drivers during the 24-hour race at Dubai at the moment. Uh, at the wheel now here at the Bildstein car is Bradley Philpott. Uh, so he is sending it to 7th position, having checkered flag now, so they are in 7th. And we uh, are now on board with Schnitzel Arm Racing. Strong performance of them in last in the last race. Um, at the wheel there is Marcel Macevic. They were driving from Portimao last time. And as I say, uh, some of the pro drivers doing the 24-hour race at Dubai at the moment. So there are a couple of things going on. And also a special one at the Team Heusingfeld car. Uh, with Adam Christodoulou as the pro driver. We are now back here on board or on track with the Male car, which is uh, again a BMW team Great Britain, Chessie Crone. And uh, through the area of Punchen. That car looks massive on the track, so a very wide open front air intake. And it's it's interesting to see that car doing their yeah, championships and fast laps already on the Nordschleife, not even have, having done one single lap uh, in real life on the track, uh, which is interesting. So the uh, cooperation between iRacing and BMW is, is strong also. Uh, BMW just announced um, in December that there will be a strong cooperation between the sim racing teams and also the um, a real world um, the development. All the cars coming uh, over the line 
at the moment. So, and we see that still BS competition is in front, in front of uh, Team BMW Bank. And uh, the uh, Mahler Racing Team in third position. Staying here with the BMW team Great Britain. And I was wrong, sorry about that. Uh, Alessandro Bico is the driver, not Jesse Crone at the moment, as uh, they changed the order. And now going over the line into pit lane. So he just saw on the dashboard that he will not improve his lap time, so he just came back into pit lane. And they will stay in sixth position, in, in fourth position. And over the line coming uh, Male Koresim Racing in eighth position. Now we see Manfilter Team HTP Winward crossing the line in fourth. So it's BS, BMW Bank, Male, Manfilter, Haupt Racing, Heusingfeld in fifth, Great Britain in sixth. Now we have MJ Performance by Promotion. So that's the team of uh, Marek Böckmann and Jan Philipp Springop. Springop just uh, secured the championship in uh, the ADAC Sim Racing Cup couple days ago. Now again on board with the RN Vision STS GT3, which is the keep on racing car. Basilios Beleziotis. Now I have it. Um, he's behind the steering wheel. Going for one more shot in ninth position at the moment. Let's see if he can improve one more time to climb up furthermore the, uh, the standings. Right after that, we go into the gridding of the third round of the DNLS. Crossing the line, no improvement. Eight minutes, zero, 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 zero point eight, three, one. That's the time of the RN Vision car. And that's also the last car in a qualifying, crossing the line. So all cars now cross the finish line, going back into pit lane. And they are adjusting the setup, adjusting the fuel capacity, and so on for their first stint of the race. And then we go into the th three hours. And as I'm talking about the uh, fuel capacity, just having a quick look on the Lamborghini Huracan, um, also fuel adjustment is uh, adjusted by minus 2%, so also like the BMW M4 GT3 to 89% and power adjustment as well to 99% and additional weight is added by two, uh, 12 kilogram. So adjustments were made to the Lamborghini and to the BMW M4 uh, and no adjustments were made to the uh, Mercedes AMG GT3. So first time we see the M4 and the Lamborghini on track in SP9 but also having a look into the very strong in the very, very strong classes of uh, the other cars. That's the pole sitter. That's uh, BS competition. Laurin Heinrich set the time. So they were fastest with uh, 7 minutes 55.288, which claimed them a first position with a half a second in front of their teammates from a, a team a BMW Bank. Kai Kashuba was the driver there. 7 minutes 55.771. And 
also a seven minutes 55 eight one three it's the Mahle racing team so we have bmw 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 in front then we have mercedes mercedes bmw so that's the top six and the best lamborghini is in eighth position with carl jansson for core sim racing that's at the moment the standings but we will have a look on the starting grid in a couple of seconds a very nice overview to the uh, nürburgring area the pit building and I'm very much looking forward to, to that race because nobody really knows um, how the um, the new car is behaving. And also adjustments were made, for example, to the Porsche Cayman GT4 so in SP10 class. They have additional weight, 7 kilos more. Um, so that means if they're going from um, 18 kilogram additional weight to 25 now, uh, which is uh, also quite interesting. Um, and uh, no adjustments were made to the M4 GT4. So we have the M4 as the GT3 and GT4. That's the starting grid. So we have BS competition in front of a BMW bank car, uh, both B both in uh, the M4 GT3. Then a team Great Britain from a BMW in front of the first Mercedes AMG GT3, Manfilter Team HTP Winward, and the second one is Mercedes AMG Team HRT Heusingfeld. Williams Esports is in six with their BMW, and then we have uh, Haupt Racing Team Bildstein in seventh, in front of the first Lamborghini with Core Sim Racing uh, in eighth position. Um, let's see if the Lamborghini can climb up a little more in the standings, uh, hopefully over the next three hours. Then we have the RN Vision car in ninth, completed the top 10 is completed by the next Lamborghini from HNR team by five star. BS competition number 90 in 11th, 12th, Haupt Racing team AM Solution, Schnitzel Arm Racing in 13th, 14th position, Dürener Motorsport Club EV, MNJ Performance by Promotion in 15th, and 16th position is Butler Pal Motorsport. So you see quite a lot of BMWs. Um, they all had to switch, um, or they all switched. Um, also, some of them switched from uh, the Audi, as uh, Butler Pal was driving the Audi R8 LMS. Um, in the past, now they switched to the BMW. The last two entries uh, also in the grid is Nima's Race Cars Esports in 17th position and in 18th position is ERC powered by FSP and the TÜV Rheinland car in 18th position, the Lamborghini Huracan. That's the SP9 class going now into the um, SP10 class. Chorus Sim Racing another time um, in front. Strong performance again uh, from them. Uh, Marius Golombek was the driver. BS competition with their M4 um, in second. Then we have Team RSO in third position. VAR Racing in fourth, fifth is Undici Scuderia, sixth Sim RC SP10, our ambition is in seventh and in eighth position. That's the Schnitzel Alm. IMC Siegburg in ninth, tenth Race Tech Performance, eleventh Mühner Motorsport Sim Racing, VS Racing Esports Black in twelfth, and last but not least in thirteenth position, EPS. Rennsport Esports. Then going into Cup 2 class, once again, Asher Racing, uh, strong performance, also good performance in qualifying, but La Palme Motorsport with a second place, MRS GT Racing at Deutsche Payment in third, V and SE Motorsport by H2P is in fourth, Sim RSC Cup 2 fifth, sixth H2 Performance, seventh Eibach Sim Racing Team and in eighth Rennwelten Pro team, that's the top eight here in a Cup 2 class. And then ninth position, Wolf Motorsport Sim Racing and Deutsche Payment at Race Union is in 10th position in front of Team Nürburgring Esports and uh, VS Racing Esports Red with no timing, uh, which is interesting because uh, Team Nürburgring Esports, they are usually quite strong 
um, in the Cup 2 class. So let's uh, find out what happened there in qualifying and uh, let's see uh, how they can um, change that in the race. Last but not least, uh, SB3 T class, Sim RSC once again in front, in front, oh, both cars of uh, Sim RSC. Um, in in front here, uh, Frozen Speed Full Sand Racing in third, Team Heusingfeld in fourth position. So also, again, the um, usual candidates there. Low Grip Racing Team, Race Line Sim Sports in fifth and sixth, seventh, Venina Racing Team and Power Team Racing is in eighth position with their Audi RS3 LMS. So that's the top eight of the uh, sp3t and now we are only a couple of seconds away from the short from formation lab of uh, the sp9 class as we start in three groups starting with the uh, sp9 class sp10 cup 2 and sp3t as we saw also the starting grid As I see it right, because I just mentioned that in two, uh, class cap 2, um, probably um, as Sebastian Fiedelak is the driver there, or one of the drivers there, he received a throughput fell uh, to unacceptable level, so he... So the internet connection was not stable enough, probably. Uh, pro maybe because of that he has no time, to, but um, we will work on that. We will find that out for you to um, let you know why there's no timing. But first of all, we concentrate now on the third round of uh, the Digital Nürburgring Endurance Series presented by Goodyear, which is the TÜV Rheinland three-hour race happening today at the 16th of January in 2021. So the first race of the NLS in the new year. By the way, I didn't mention that. Happy New Year to everybody out there. Enjoy the race with the new M4 GT3, with the Mercedes AMG GT3 and the new Lamborghini Huracan GT3. Pace car just took off and is leading now the pack of SP9 cars into the start area. And then we will have a look on the start of the GT3 cars. Everybody is close together now and the pace car will go into pit lane. We'll go into pit lane now for having Laurin Heinrich leading the field to the green light. Now they are packed together. Pace car is going into pit lane. Almost crashed into pit lane there. And now Laurin Heinrich, he is starting to accelerate. We just saw the keep on racing car moving out into uh, to the right hand side. Also, Manfilter is closing there, searching for the right gap. And Heinrich looks strong for turn number one. Also on the outside. The team BMW Bang. Everything is fine in the first one and two corners. So we have a BS in front of Team uh, BMW Bank. Then a close fight between Heusingfeld and Manfilter, the two Mercedes AMG GT3 cars there. But everything looks fine for the first half, a lot, half of a lap of the Grand Prix circuit. Of the sh now through the shortcut, here we see the Bildstein car with. Um, Danny Chiusa at the wheel. He is pushing right at the rear bumper of the second BS competition car while we switch to the Cup 2 class here in the second start. Here we go. Asher Racing is uh, sending it. Martin Asher himself. He is again on the wheel, but now already to uh, def defending here is the... Uh, Butler Pal car. 
but Lepal stays second uh, while we see a close fight between the cars behind, which is MRS and VSE Motorsport. Everything looks fine also here through Mercedes Arena. Approaching the shortcut now. Again, it's Martin Ascher in front, and then in second position it's uh, Keanu Buschmann for Butler Palm Motorsports in the blue and white. Porsche 911 GT3 Cup car. Here we have MRS uh, behind with Marvin Otterbach behind VS uh, yeah, Motorsport and switching into SP10 class. So our GT4 class with the GT4 cars. Here it's Core Sim Racing with Mario Skolombek in front and uh, next to him it's Mario Suk for BS competition another BS entry there and here we go also green flag for this for the SP10 class the close there between Golombek and Suk Suk tries to move on the inside for turn number one can he make it Golombek tries to defend but no way Mario Suk is now leading the Pack, but also Golombek is fighting back now in a better line for the next left turn. Golombek on the inside lane, and he make it, he makes it back. So Golombek again in front of the uh, SP10 class, in front of Marius Zug, and behind there it's Team RSO Nils Kastensen. Last but not least, now SP3T, the two Sim RSC cars in front, the yellow with the blue and red details on the car. Behind there we see Frozen Speed just making the move to the inside to close the gap, to close the line for Heusingfeld. And also the uh, first SimRC car with Felix Luding. Um, he moves to the right hand side with the red details. That's Luding uh, in front of Florian Beute in the blue detailed car. Then we have frozen speed, but also under pressure of Heusingfeld. And behind there, it's low grip and race line fighting for the fifth and sixth position. That's the start. And uh, we are we're going into split screen for the fight here still in SP3T. And in the uh, large window, we have the SP9 class with Padla, Padla Pal racing in... Uh, in their BMW M4 GT3. They are in 15th position at, at the moment. In front of them, it's MNJ Performance behind is ERC, powered by FSP TÜV Rheinland. And uh, going now to, I, I like to say, new corner. I know, it's, it's, it's kind of brave corner, but on the outside, there's the move of Butler Pal. And uh, Florian Krüger is the driver. He makes the move around of Jan Philipp Spring up before that fast left-hander. Now going into Steilstrecke. And a uh, very strong move there from Florian Krüger. That's the positions at the moment. So on 14th position, they're slow there. Manfilter, very slow. Um, they look like having problems. Um, it's Jack Sedwick, who is uh, driving that car. They were very slow out of the carousel, but now it looks like they are back to speed. While well, this is the fight, for the four, for the fourth, fifth, and sixth position, if I am right, no, no, it's the third, fourth, and fifth. So that's uh, the position. So it's a uh, Heusingfeld in front of Williams. Williams is uh, the driver for for the, the Williams car. 
and uh, then we have the Male car, or better say, Team BMW Bank car, uh, the BMW Team Great Britain. So that's for, uh, second and third position. We have Team BMW Bank with Kai Kashube in uh, the uh, gray and black car. And then behind there we have a uh, BMW Team Great Britain with Alexandro Pico. We are back at the Döttinger Höhe for the first time, so first lap is almost completed and we have Laurin Heinrich here uh, from ABS uh, competition in the leading or leading in SP9. In split screen we have Martin Ascher in a Cup 2 class in front of the Butler Pal motorsport car with Keanu Buschmann. So coming over the line for the first time um, that's already a small gap from Heinrich in front of Kashube. Um, also, uh, for sure, having an advantage because of the fight of Kashube and the uh, uh, and uh, Sami Matitrogen. Then we have. The uh, Heusingfeld car. In front of BMW Team Great Britain. Here the fight, Danny Chiusa. In uh, the Bielstein car. Fighting with H&R Team 5 Star Lamborghini. Behind there it's Schnitzelalm and Core Sim Racing. So that's the pack from a 7th, 8th, 9th and 10th position. So all around the top 10. Danny Chiusa, as I say, uh, having um, to adjust every time a little bit because of their um, changes of driver, Nico Bastian and Marco Engel, for example, during the, Nürburgring, uh, during the Daytona 24-hour race at the moment. Martin Asher under pressure. More under pressure now from Keanu Buschmann. So, well, after they come back for the first time, it's Martin Asher from Asher Racing, Keanu Buschmann, Butler Pal Motorsport, and then we have VSE Motorsport by H2P, Dennis Aras, Fabri. But also, Fabri is under pressure of MRS GT Racing driver uh, Marvin Otterbach. And we are on board with Jan Zentkowski from Heusingfeld. Having a look to, to the BMW Team Great Britain, Alessandro Pico. New entry in the NLS. And they are fighting for fourth and fifth position, only half a second gap. And uh, Marius Golombek, while well, we see here the SP10 class, uh, Marius Golombek has already a gap now to Marius Zug uh, while they were fighting in uh, the first couple of corners very close together. Now Zug is under pressure of uh, the uh, second uh, M4 GT4 car, which is, needed, uh, which is uh, the uh, uh, entry of uh, SimRC. SP10, Tom Valentini, and he makes the move around Marius Zug. And so they cross the line in the order of K 
Core Sim Racing, Marius Golombek in first position. Then we have a Sim RC SP10 in second with Tom Valentini. And the third, Marius Zug. This is uh, Marius Golombek. So Golombek at the wheel, talking to his team. Because uh, his teammates and uh, his, uh, or his teammate, uh, which is uh, Pascal Stix again, um, they talk and they talk about strategy and they talk about the, uh, the, the other drivers, the competitors behind. So there's a lot of things going on. It's not only go in there and drive so there's a lot of logistics behind these uh, let's say professional sim racing teams core sim racing is one of the professional teams another professional team is bs competition marius zug is one of the drivers here in sp10 class and uh, he is sharing the car with robert heger both bs competition cars uh, drivers and uh, also bs is uh, another professional team like SimRC, like Team RSO, so they are very much doing that, uh, that kind of, let's say, job professional, and uh, spending a lot of time in the simulator, besides maybe going to work a little bit sideways there, Schnitzel, Ein, Marcel, Marcevic, behind the Giusa, we are on board with Giusa now in eighth position with the Bielstein car. And the user is sharing, as I say, the car with a Bradley Fieldpot. And Marcevic in the Schnitzelalm car. No, I'm sorry, Jamo Hadling is doing the first in there. And usually it's Marcevic, now it's Jamo Hadling. We stay on that fight while we uh, go in split, st split screen in the SP10 class. Still there, the Sim RC car in front of Mario Supi as competition in Team RSO. The gap to Mario Skolombek from Coro Sim Racing is already over three seconds. Danny Chiusa. Um, the, the, the new formed Haupt Racing team, so it's new formed in the last year, or yeah, in the, uh, the last year, um, having uh, making the switch from a Black Falcon to a Haupt Racing team, um, because most of the drivers and the, um, the team uh, members they are coming from Black Falcon, but now Haupt Racing team, and they decided uh, quite early in the early stages of uh, the team that they will have a professional sim racing team and in the end of last year they uh, made the move to the uh, Haup racing team in sim racing and the Danny Chiusa, he is the team manager of that team and dri a driver himself as well. But La Pal Motorsport also doing a real world motorsport with René Butler and uh, as uh, the team manager or team owner, uh, doing both, uh, doing some of the RCN uh, races and uh, also here in sim racing, they are quite huge and having quite a lot of entries. So, doing the SP9 class, doing the Cup 2 class. Um, so, um, it's quite interesting um, that how they grow. And here now with Keanu Buschmann, also a, a very experienced driver behind the steering wheel doing also sim racing for many years already and uh, that's why uh, very very much experience also Asher racing in front there um, also there they're providing uh, parts and stuff and they're doing uh, racing as well so um, it's one huge family in the end but on no family is going on here in the split screen while we have Williams eSports making the move 
uh, on the Zentkowski, the Heusingfeld car for fourth position and make it. So now, new fourth, a new in fourth position, it's um, Williams Esports. And uh, in fifth now, the Heusingfeld car. The, the performance of um, the Williams guys, um, they are always very strong. Um, so, uh, Sami Mati Drogen as well as Alex Arana. But they're changing uh, sometimes order. Dominic Steib is also one of the drivers. But uh, sometimes, uh, especially Steib having hardware problems um, and uh, making them um, not having the results they wish for. Well, now here, Padlapal makes the move uh, out of the slipstream. Uh, on Martin Asher going to into the lead of the Cup 2 class after the second lap of the race. So now Jano Buschmann is the new leader in the Cup 2 class in front of Martin Asher from Asher Racing and in third position, that's the VSE Motorsport by H2P. We have uh, two cars in pit lane, as I see, which is uh, Robbie Foley from a BS competition, the second entry, the number 90 car. And also um, still René Kirchhoff uh, from Nürburgring Esports Lounge, or Team Nürburgring Esports, um, which is quite interesting. And Danny Chiusa, he's also in pit lane, um, probably having problems there. Um, because that's unusual to go after the second lap into the pit lane for a pit stop. Most probably we see cars coming in after the fourth or fifth lap or doing the whole seven or eight laps. Now going into SP3 T class here in front. That's in front of that glass it's a similar C Felix Luding then we have Tim Heusingfeld with a little gap and here that fight that is Lorian Moite it's Dean Ledger from Sim RC and Frozen Speed Full Send fighting for third and fourth position a lot of pressure on Moite there from Steen Ledger The SP3T class is full of Audi RS3 LMS cars, as that's the only one uh, from the touring cars in uh, the iRacing service. And in uh, the last race in DNS3, we uh, had some of the some adjustments have been taken on that on that car, uh, but there's no change for this round. So still the same adjustments um, as we had that in the NES 3. Again, here on board, the RC, uh, Florian Voite, and we see Steen Ledger, quite huge in the back view of Voite. Uh, it seems like uh, Ledger is faster and maybe he can make the move now or in the slipstream of the long Döttinger Höhe. As Felix Luding and uh, Patrick Kubinci having already a little gap to these two, those two drivers. Now there's the move. The ledger goes side by side. You see them here. Talking to his teammates. Also, where he where is he? Where is he? Can I make the move? Beute is also strong. He's next to him and both both touch each other. Both touch 
And now they crash. Dean Ledger shaking his head. And both in third and fourth position. They crashed. And Voigt uh, wanted to go into pit lane, but uh, decided quite late that he will stay out there. So his teammate, uh, which is Felix Luding, is leading in front of Patrick Kubinci from Team Heusingfeld. And now um, they're in a third position in the SP3T class. We have a low grip racing in front of Frozen Speed. So, uh, pro most probably, I think um, we will maybe see a replay of, of what happened there as uh, they were going side by side. The whole Göttinger here. And here we go. And then here, right after the bridge, is the ledger on the right-hand side. He still stays beside him and then... From that angle, it looked a little bit like uh, Steen Ledger made a little move to the left-hand side, and that's why they touched. But I think uh, race control uh, will have a look on that for, sh on that for sure. But uh, it looks a bit like that there was a little movement. Uh, but uh, just saying here from uh, that angle, as race control is having quite more angles to um, judge that. Still, frozen speed in fourth position. And Sim RC, Florian Voite, is moving back to fifth position now. That's the leader. After almost half an hour done, BS competition, Laurin Heinrich is still the driver of the BMW M4 GT3 car, the prototype car. Um, quite a huge gap. Um, when you can, uh, if you can say that, uh, one one and a half seconds to uh, the second uh, BMW M4 GT3, which is a uh, team Great Britain, and uh, that's the Male livery having on there. Male racing team, something like Trogen. That it's uh, not Team Great Britain, it's something that it's a Mali racing team. Uh, then we have Team BMW Bank, Kai Kashuge in third position. That's uh, that black and gray car here in uh, the typical Zebra look of the BS competition cars. Also, again, strong performance, as I say, uh, as I said in the beginning of uh, the, the stream. Here we have Kai Kashuge, and uh, that's the um, current um, champions or, or last year's champions of the BNLS, Kai Kashube, also very experienced driver in sim racing, doing, I know, quite a lot of setup work and uh, is uh, doing quite a lot of things in the background um, for the team, sharing the car with Bruno Spengler and usually Niels Koch, but Niels Koch is not in the entry list as I see here. Um, so it's only the sharing car with Bruno Spengler. Then we have Williams Esports in fourth position. And uh, that's the BMW Team Great Britain. Alexand Alessandro Bico is the driver we see here. Bico, it's the uh, he's sharing the car with Jesse Crone now in fourth position. Behind there we have Haupt Racing Team Heusingfeld with Jan Zentkowski in the fifth position. And they are right behind the car of the BMW Team Great Britain. And uh, then we switch to Cup 2 class. Martin Asher is now back in the lead in front of uh, the Butler Pal car. So Asher uh, just made the move also on the uh, Butler Pal car, going back into the lead of that class. So they are leading now, as they are also um, in the championship. Um, they are leading the championship as well. While well, here comes the move again from Bushman for the. Butler, Butler Pal crew 
tries to just show himself in the mirror, in the back mirror of Asha. And uh, Asha can defend that in front of Bushman. Behind there, in the third position, closing the gap even more. That's uh, VS uh, E-Motorsports by HTP. Dennis Aras Fabri is the driver uh, of that car. And now you see uh, from a fight between Asher and Bushman is now a fight between Asher, Bushman and um, Aras, uh, Aras Fabri. In SP9, in sixth position, it's uh, the uh, Keep On Racing R and Vision STS car uh, with uh, the uh, with Vasilios Belet Ziotis uh, as uh, the driver. They are, um, yeah, there's uh, quite a gap to the front and also to the back, so they are settled at the moment in that sixth position. In seventh, we have H and R team by five star um, so Max Riedmüller is the driver there um, in their in their Lamborghini Huracan uh, which is the best place Huracan at the moment in the SP9 class behind there in the green car in the green Mercedes AMG GT, uh, GT3 we have a well known team and uh, that is called uh, Schnitzelalm Racing. Jamo Hedling is the driver, sharing the car as usual with Mars Marcel Marcevic. Sitting in eighth position. And uh, at the moment in the sixth overall in the championship standings. And behind there, the second Lamborghini from Core Sim Racing, Karl E. Jansson is the driver at the moment and sharing the car with Sintra Setsas. Here we see also Jansson um, at work, fully concentrated in his Lamborghini. It seems like that the Lamborghini is not at the performance level as the BMWs, but also having in mind that the, uh, the drivers, um, they're package, the, the whole driver package of the BMW cars is very strong, uh, but sure John, Johnson and uh, Setsas, they are also strong car, uh, strong drivers so that's why probably the Lamborghini is also not on the level it should be here right now and last but not least in top 10 uh, the Manfield Team HTP Windward car um, also not new drivers, but special uh, drivers mixed here in the car. Jack Sedwick is the driver at the moment and he is sharing the car with Marvin Dienst and Alexi Iloma as um, Philip Ellis is uh, not here at the DNLS at this time. So he is making a break from DNLS uh, most probably uh, I think he's not, he's not in Dubai I think he's not in Dubai. I think he, uh, yeah, he goes to Daytona next week for the Raw and then for one week later for the 24 Daytona. But, um, yeah, so that's why Dienst is uh, taking over from him. Going to come to, as I say, Martin Asher in front. Then we have uh, Keanu Buschmann for Butler Pal Motorsport in second position in front of and I know I've already mentioned that uh, BSE Motorsport by H2P uh, there, the driver there it's uh, Dennis Aras Fabri and Anas Fabri he's uh, making quite a lot of pressure already on Keanu uh, Buschmann now we, well we see here still Buschmann in the focus um, so that's that's the car of um, Aras Fabri and um, he closed the gap uh, the, the huge gap to, to these two as they were fighting uh, for uh, the whole lap so since lap number one they, they are fighting Asher and Bushman and that was well, that is the chance for Aras Fabri to close it and now we're getting even closer to the rear end of Bushman's car the 911 GT3 Cup car 
So that's the top three at the moment in the Cup 2 class. And very nice pictures we see here from the car and Aras Fabi make. He's exiting better from uh, the carousel and now he's moving next to Bushman but um, he's just waiting for that move. No risk at the early stages of the three-hour race to Tiff Rheinland. Three-hour race here at the Digital Nürburgring Endurance Series presented by Goodyear. Split screen again. Well, we see in the second street screen. So it's another close fight still going on here in the SP10 class. Marius Suk uh, and uh, team uh, from a team BS competition, and then we have Team RSO, uh, the Team RSO car with Nils Carstensen, and behind there is Tom Valentini for a Sim RC. Also, Simarsi ha having a lot of entries. And that's the fight in SP10 for second position. Second, third, and fourth position we see there in split screen. While on the other screen it's first, second, and third in Cup 2. In. So as we are a little more than half an hour into the race, um, we are over halfway through the stints as well of the first driver or the first stint overall. And we just wait for the first pit stops. I would say in SP9 class after seven, maybe eight laps. Uh, let's see, sometimes uh, in uh, the past races, um, uh, especially Laurin Heinrich could make make it uh, for eight laps, for example. Uh, while we see here still the race and the fight for first position in Cup 2 class, still Keanu Buschmann putting pressure onto Martin Ascher. And that's always, that's always the chance for um, the BS car, um, for Aras Fabri, to close the gap. While they are fighting, uh, he has a double amount of slipstream. Now on the outside, that should not work out. And still Usher. Stays in front, late on late on the brakes for Keanu Bushman there. So a lot of very nice and close fights here in Cup 2 and SP10 class. While Zug is still defending his second position in front of the Sim RC car. Of uh, Tom Valentini now, uh, there was the chance, uh, ch chance, the change of uh, position as uh, Team RSO just fell back one position. So bon uh, Tom Valentini overtook Nils Carstensen for third position in SP10. That's still the fight in SP10 class BS competition. 
with the M4 the GT4 car in front of uh, another M4 GT4 car from Valentini while well, we see here Nils Kastensen it's the driver of the Porsche Cayman GT4 Club Sport now you can see how he has to work on the steering wheel so it's not easy to drive it's uh, a lot of work to do a lot of uh, counter steering and corrections as we know that the, the Cayman is also not so easy to drive you can smile maybe he got told that uh, he's on screen now having a look sometimes into camera now making the move as uh, we saw just the move that uh, Valentini um, is now in second position and Zug fell back on the third position on board we saw that from Niels Carstensen and uh, Unrein Chicane he is close to the rear end of the of the BMW M4 GT4 car of Marius Zug, maybe he can use the slipstream on the start and finish the straight to make a move at the end of the straight, but it looks like that he is too far away. And again, fight for first, second and third in Cup 2 class, Asher from Asher Racing, Bushman Patla Pal and uh, Aras Fabri for BS Motorsport. So that's a very close fight, but coming into the top class, which is the SP9. We see that uh, leader, Laurin Heinrich, here in focus, is uh, losing a little bit as uh, the second place car is making more and more his move and closing the gap to the leading car, which is the, the Male car. And the Male car is the BMW Team Great Britain. Now full speed here, and we can see that uh, Tenth by tenth, um, the uh, San Mati Drogen is uh, closing that gap. After almost one minute of uh, one hour of racing here at the Nürburgring Nordschleife, we will have a short break. And uh, after that short break, we will be back here, fresh sorted out at the uh, Digital Nürburgring Endurance Series presented by Goodyear and the TÜV Rheinland a three hour race. So stay tuned. We are back in a couple seconds here for you.
And we are back at the Digital Nürburgring Endurance Series presented by Goodyear with the TÜV Rheinland three-hour race. We are also back at the leading pack of the SP9 class, which is uh, Laurin Heinrich in front of Sami Matti Drogen in the Male car. So uh, the, uh, um, the team in uh, the standings is not BMW Team Great Britain. It's uh, just for your information, it's the Male racing team. And here we see also Sami Matti Drogen as a Male racing team is part of the uh, Williams Esports crew. They are close to the rear and, and they know each other quite well as Laurin Heinrich, uh, the driver we see in front of uh, Trogen, he was teammate with the... Uh, uh, both, both of them were teammates at Williams Esports before Laurin Heinrich made the move to BS competition. Uh, all that happened uh, last year in 2020 and now they are competitors here on the track not on the North Drive only but also on all of the sim racing tracks uh, all over the world so that's the fight for first and second position in the SP9 class and I'm just waiting for the M4 GT3 car while now Trogen is closing the gap in the slipstream, making the move on the outside. Can he make the move? And he's next to Laurin Heinrich, so that's for the lead in SP9 class. And very professional drivers there, you see. They leave enough space. They will go side by side from the Antonius Buche through until start and finish and Trogen is making his pit stop. Trogen is the first one from the SP9 class doing the pit stop after um, the uh, after yeah, 15 minutes of the race which equals 6 laps And here, that's again still the fight in uh, the Cup 2 class while the S in Motorsport by H2P. Dennis Aras Fabri, he could overtake Keanu Buschmann for a second position. So Buschmann and Butler Pahl only in third now, while still Martin Ascher is leading the Cup 2 class. So that's the change we uh, just missed in uh, the break. But Bushman is uh, still pushing, putting pressure on Dennis Aras Fabri. And uh, what a camera. I, I really love that camera. Uh, uh, that one and uh, the same one to, to the back of the car because they, uh, they just show you the speed the drivers do here on the Nürburgring Nordschleife on that famous track also here in the simulation and we see both cameras now the front camera and the rear end camera both of them and their mistake by mistake by Keanu Buschmann as as you know prob most probably the 911 GT3 Cup car has no ABS system and it looked like the front left wheel locked a little bit at Bushman's car and so he lost a little bit of time and a little bit of gap to the second place being as e-motorsport Dennis Aras Fabri you see there's quite a huge gap now in between them which uh, is good for Aras Fabri because then he can uh, use the slipstream to close the gap to Usher. He's doing now again from camera and you see how he can close the gap. He's 
Going closer and closer to the car, to the 911th. And stays behind. And he's clever enough. He just made that, uh, or showed that before, that he's clever enough not to make any risky move. And so that's why the new order is Martin Ascher for Aqua Racing in front of Dennis Aras Fabri, VNS e Motorsport by HTP. And third position is Butler Pal Keanu Buschmann. That's the Schnitzel Alm car in fifth position again. Uh, slowly, but uh, um, position by position, they make their move or they make their way to the front pack. Uh, in sixth position, that's the, the fight they do. Uh, it's the Corusim Racing Lamborghini. Best positioned Lamborghini now. They should be. Yes, they are. So, Corusim Racing is now the best as H and R. I'm missing the H and R. Um, the H and R, Max Riedmüller. Um, he was in the pit lane maybe because of a crash or because he was for um, six minutes in the pit lane and uh, so because they were best placed Lamborghini and most probably th something happened to the uh, HFR Lamborghini as a core sim racing we are here on board now with Carl Jansson and see him as well in the split screen um, they are now in their Lamborghini the best place as we have two of them in the field in sixth position. What a sound it is. Um, I mean, it, it's, you, you know, when you say it in bad words, so you say, uh, people say, okay, that's uh, an Audi R8 with another shape on it, but uh, I, I really like that car. Um, well, we see in split screen also the, sh the, the second Schnitzel Alm car in SB10 class uh, fighting for uh, fourth and uh, fifth position. So both of the Schnitzel Alm entries we see there. And uh, the SP9, the Mercedes AMG GT3 car, the Schnitzel Alm car is closing the gap also to the Keep On Racing RN Vision car. And they are now at the rear bumper of the, of the car. Uh, still uh, the driver, Vasilios Belet Ciotis. So he's still driving that car and now it's not only fight for fifth and sixth, it's four, fourth, fifth and sixth position. It seems like that uh, Keep On Racing is a little bit in trouble, most probably because of tire wear. We, we just saw that, uh, or we, we, we we're waiting for it uh, as we didn't know how the car is behaving after such a long stint. Also with the uh, BOP adjustments, power, fuel capacity and also weight they got. And you see that uh, Jamo Hertling, driver of the Schnitzel Alm car, he is faster. Then, and there was the mistake, there was the mistake and uh, Jamo Hertling made the move around, keep on racing. Now in fourth position, Schnitzel Alm in fifth, keep on racing, and in sixth is Forest Sim Racing in the Lamborghini. So Mercedes, BMW, and Lamborghini. That's also the cars we have in SP9 class, all of them. And now again, Schnitzel Alm is making their way to the front, um, as we have uh, with Heusingfeld and uh, Schnitzel Alm to Mercedes AMG GT3 in the top four and uh, Coro Sim Racing with the Lamborghinis we have all of the uh, of the uh, manufacturers in the top six
pressure is now on Eletsiotis as uh, Gamson is right behind him using again the slipstream going out of the slipstream side draft now and again here he's trying to make the move but um, power is not enough it seems like that the Lamborghini has not enough power even though out of the slipstream to make a move around the BMW so Jansen had to go back into slipstream and could not make any move after the long straight on the M4 GT3. Here we go, as the uh, BMW goes into the pit lane, most probably having um, big, big trouble with tire wear. Uh, because after seven laps, also all the BMWs in pit lane, all BMWs in pit lane now, so they can only do, and also maybe because of fuel capacity, they can only do seven laps as all the Mercedes and the Lamborghini stay out. No, not everybody, but Heusingfeld stays out, Cora stays out, also uh, Haup Racing, um, AM Solution stays out. Um, so that's the only three cars not having done their pit stop. Uh, that's a second place car now. Uh, in front of them, that's Heusingfeld, Jan Zentkowski. Here we go. That's the current leader of the uh, TÜV Rheinland three-hour race. And they are... And th that's that's what they have done the last two DNLS races. In the first and second round as well, they were very good on tire wear and uh, uh, fuel consumption. As, they, uh, as their strategy is just to make it um, clever enough uh, to do one or two laps more, so over the whole over the whole stint uh, of the three hours, um, and maybe to gain by that um, positions. And again, they're doing eight laps. They do eight laps with their Mercedes AMG GT3, but also the Coca the sim racing. Uh, uh, with Karl Jansson is uh, doing the same. And here we go into Cup 2 once again. So still Martin Ascher in front of Dennis Aras Fabri. Ascher don't want to give slipstream to Fabri or Aras Fabri. Keep on racing car is out of pit lane. And after most probably the next lap, not at, at the end of this lap, but at the end of the next lap, we see the uh, current standings while Aras Fabri makes the move. He makes the move on the outside of that area in uh, Hohenrein chicane to uh, go into the lead of the Cup 2 class into the pit lane. That was a move that was brave. That was a brave move and now makes them going into the lead for the pit stop. So that gives gives them um, very good a very good chance in a pit lane for the pit stop. Now hopefully everything is set up right in the pit stop. Fuel also tires. Maybe they change drivers. Let's see. Um, yes, it looks like yeah, Markus Jirak takes over from Usher and uh, then is Aras Fabri stays in the car. Aras Fabri stays in the car and Jirak, uh, he um, goes into the car. So fresh, a fresh new driver in the Usher car. But uh, nah, Florian Boudin. Florian Boudin is also taking over. No, oh, Niklas Last, sorry. Niklas Last is taking over in the uh, VNS e Motorsport. So both change drivers. Irak and Last are the new drivers there. Here we go. MRS is out of pit lane. MRS is out of pit lane. Okay. And here they go. That's Usher. Racing and that's V and S. 
And in front is Team RSO. Asha. So we have to wait. We have to wait as Bushman was not in the pit lane yet. So we have to wait uh, after the next lap. We know exactly where we are in the standings. Gabriele Piana has the pro in the Keep On Racing RM Vision car. Also experienced driver in both in uh, sim racing, but ma mainly in rear racing on the Liverpool Nordschleife. He knows the BMW, but not the M4 GT3. He knows the M4 GT4 car, as he is driving that car in the uh, uh, GT4 Germany Championship. And that's Bernina Racing Team. <laughs> Bernina Racing Team and the Sim RC in uh, fourth and fifth. in uh, the SP3T class. Still, we have also the Deutsche Payment Championship, which is uh, a special classification for less incidents, fast laps, uh, gaining positions or positions in class. So it's an overall championship between all the classes and you can uh, win up to 1,500 euros. So um, that's a very nice idea from uh, Deutsche Payment as a partner of uh, the Digital Nürburgring Endurance um, uh, uh, Championship. And um, so everybody is uh, fighting in that championship as well. And having a look in there, we have Asher racing in front of Team RSO and uh, Heusingfeld. So um, it's uh, Cup 2, uh, SP10 and SP3T there. Um, Male is the best. Um, Male racing team is the best SP9 car in fifth position only. But here... That's Gabriele Piana fighting with M and J performance by promotion. Um, that's uh, the uh, fight there um, at Kesselchen Klostertal. And yeah, Piana makes the move. And uh, now he just passed Jan Philipp Springer, still in the car of the promotion Mercedes AMG GT3. The colors of the Keep On Racing uh, car, they are very special. It's the special colors of the Keep On Racing guys. And uh, also uh, growing. They are growing in some racing. I'm um, doing that for quite a long time. Uh, but they are growing even more, getting bigger and also more professional. Um, and now showing their performance here uh, with uh, their BMW M4 GT3 in uh, the DNLS. Here we jump into SP10 class and we see the pit stop in uh, real life now as uh, Schnitzel Iron comes in and also Keep On Racing comes in. But when they stop there... It, ah, yeah. um, as we have not enough uh, pit uh, uh, garages, I think they have to stop at the uh, penalty area because there, uh, where they stop, that's the penalty area. I was wondering if they maybe get penalties or something. But uh, here we go. So that's now the pit stop from Haupt Racing Team AM Solution, but Male a Racing Team uh, with Sami Mati Drogen still driving the car. They are now back in the lead. But if I'm right... So what, what happened to the Bildstein car? The Bildstein, the Haupt Bildstein car um, They had that long pit stop in the beginning of the race as Giusa had to go the pit lane, yeah, that was a lapping, uh, unfortunately. Um, so uh, there is no, so the, the uh, Bildstein car from Haupt Racing team is uh, not in the fight with Male. Um, 
while Mahler is overtaking Team RSO SB10 car. And here we see the second BMW M4 GT3. That's a BS competition. Still Laurin Heinrich driving that car. And uh, they are now in second place only. About back from first position. As uh, Sami Mati Drogen, we have to, but we have to be careful. Sami Mati Drogen pitted after six laps and uh, Heinrich after seven laps. So there's one lap um, in between them. So uh, um, it's not so easy to say um, in strategy. Uh, most probably um, they are close together as uh, Trogen didn't have to stop for such a long time as Heinrich has to do uh, with refueling. So to see the real gap, we have to wait for the uh, end of the race. And uh, after the next lap, I think we should see the real order we have on the track as Schnitzelalm is back to 10th position. And uh, Jamo Hertling still in the car. Everybody was in pit lane now for the mandatory pit stop. And it looks like that the Mercedes and the Lamborghini can do one more lap against the BMW. And that could be the advantage as well for these two cars. As we have to do one more pit stop. And uh, if they do again eight laps now and uh, seven laps only for the uh, BMW, maybe it works out in the end uh, because of uh, the uh, time in pit lane for refueling. But we have to wait for that. Stitzelalm, I just said, um, at the beginning of the broadcast, and they were doing their stints at last time from Portimao. They were testing at the racetrack in Portugal and now they are I think they, they should be back home uh, while in the Heusingfeld car um, Adam Christodoulou uh, will take over also for, for most probably for the last stint um, because Mats Torge Hutzfeld is now in the car and I know that uh, Adam Christodoulou he organized a simulator in Dubai because he's racing the GT4 at Dubai. No, he raced it. So he was doing uh, the 24-hour uh, race and uh, they, uh, they just finished the race. So uh, the race is just over. And uh, and if I'm right, they finished third in the GT4 class. So uh, most probably we see the third positioned GT4 class driver uh, later on here in DNLS Live. So that's special. And I'm doing two races, two endurance races at once. And um, Adam Grissadulu will do that. And uh, we're still here on the uh, on the car of Marcel Marcevic or Jamo Hadling with the same. Marcevic will take over that car after him. SP3T is still the fight here for 6th and 7th position as a Frozen Speed just um, lost a little bit. Low grip racing in the six or in the beginning of the race. Um, uh, Frozen Speed lost a little bit now. Low grip is under pressure of uh, Frozen Speed uh, going to 
Schwedenkreuz side by side and Arenberg corner better position for frozen speed and uh, that's uh, last ball and overtaking uh, that um, it's the low grip uh, racing team car of Niklas Schneider so now in six in sixth position is a uh, frozen speed and in seventh is low grip So at the moment, it, yeah, everybody was in pit lane and not everybody did driver changes as they do not have to do driver changes. Uh, I just remember Christian Schmitz last time in uh, the second round. He did the whole race just by himself. But here at frozen speed, especially in low grip, they had their pit stop and also driver change already done. And in uh, the SP3T class, we uh, mostly see action-packed, interesting races close together. Uh, so usually there are not that far gaps in between the cars. A lot of fights in slipstream as well. And... Uh, that's the number 40 car, the Lamborghini Huracan GT3 Evolution. That's the ERC powered by SSP TÜV Rheinland car. So that's a special car. Um, also from the partner of that race, TÜV Rheinland. And drivers here are Andreas Käferlein und Max Montermann. They are uh, driving here in 10th position. No, in 14th position. Sorry. In 14th position in SP9. And uh, there you can see it's not so easy just to come here and uh, be quick. But uh, it's good to have the chance for everybody to participate here in the NLS. In the virtual version of the Nürburgring Endurance Championship. So that's the first Lamborghini, that's uh, the second Lamborghini. And that's the best placed one uh, in sixth position. Chorus Sim Racing Sindresetzas is now behind the wheel of the number three car. And there's quite a gap to the front, which is uh, 10 seconds and uh, but only two seconds to the back, to the rear of uh, Haupt Racing Team AM Solution. Florian Denzler is the driver there. And what we do, we go back to uh, Cup 2 class. And uh, I'm a little bit wondering how MRS GT Racing at Deutsche Payment, Florian Bodin, made the move to second position. After pit stop, we saw that he was leading already. And um, I think it's just because of an early pit stop. Yes, it's because of an early pit stop. Shorter pit stop time compared to Usher, Usher Racing and uh, the end as Motorsport. But that's why MRS is in between them.
but also Butler Pal, they also had an early pit stop. Um, they were in the pit lane one lap before Usher and VNS, and so that's why they are in front. But that's always, when you can say that, like virtual, <laughs> virtual, virtual, um, because in the end, um, it's uh, it's going to be interesting how that works out compared to this car. Both of them have to do one more pit, pit stop. And then uh, after that pit stop, we will see where everybody will end up because then it's a fight to the flag. So we have now at the moment Butler Pal coming into the pit lane. Butler Pal is coming to the pit lane once again. Okay. But for me, that, that, that is strange for me because that makes no sense to... If that is in a regular... Should be in a regular pit stop, it makes no sense. That the Butler Pal is coming into pit lane once again. Keanu, Keanu Buschmann is still the driver. And... Uh, but they are doing their pit stop until Norvik will take over now the 911 GT3 Cup car. Means Usher with Markus Hirak is uh, in uh, the leading position of uh, the Cup 2 class. VNS Niklas Last is in the uh, Second in MRS is in third Florian Boudin. We are at the leaders of SP9, which is Mal Racing Team. It's not BMW Team Great Britain. It's a Mal Racing Team in front of BS Competition number number 89. So there, it's still Laurin Heinrich driving that car, but also here the gap of 5.8 seconds is because of an early pit stop of Mahle. Then in third position we have uh, Williams Esports. Or better say BMW Team Great Britain, Alessandro Bico is the driver. So something maybe because of joining the server um, happened there because that's strange be be between first and third. So we have uh, Mali in uh, first and BMW Team Great Britain third. Um, then we have uh, Haupt Racing Team Heusingfeld, Mats Torge Hutzfeld is the driver at the moment. And, uh, we have Bruno Spengler in that car. So he was very much looking forward to drive in the M4 GT3, doing quite a lot of stuff in sim racing, um, also uh, other professional sim racing series. Paul sim racing in six positions in the Setsas, another professional sim racing driver in their Lamborghini Huracan GT3 Evolution, best place car in that category. And behind them is Haupt Racing Team, AM Solutions, Florian Denzler doing his second stint and we go on board with him in the Mercedes AMG GT3. And then we have behind them Let's keep on racing. Our ambition. Gabriele Piana is the driver, another pro driver for the BMW crew. They are they are sitting in eighth position. Making their way through SP10 class. A 
and it's like in the real world. So it's not so easy to find the gaps there. Then MNJ performance by Primotion. That's at the moment still Jan Philipp spring up at the steering wheel of the Mercedes AMG GT3. Take, um, Marek Bergmann will take over after him. Schnitzel Arm Racing, J-Mo Hertling in 10th position. He will share the car with Marcel Marcevic. Marcel Marcevic will take over for the last stint then. And then we have another entry of Butler Pal Racing or Motorsport, Butler Pal Motorsport, Philipp Hagnauer is driving the number 76 car. He's sharing the car with Florian Krüger. The next entry is Dürener Motorsport Club e.V. Dominik Spieker in their BMW. In front of Nimas Race Cars Esports. Michael Nimas himself is the driver here. And then we have still in that pack in the front without having problems. Um, we have ERC powered by FSP TÜV Rheinland, the Lamborghini Huracan in 14th position and Andreas Käferlein is the driver there. We see the car here. And behind them, you see Haupt Racing Team Beachstein, Manfilter Team HTP Winward, HNR Team by Five Star, NBS Competition number 90. All of them, they are uh, they're having trouble in uh, the past laps. And uh, they are um, one lap behind the leaders on the leading pack. So that's the SP9 class at the moment after almost half of the race. And we go on board with Andreas Käferlein in his Lamborghini. And again, this sound is just amazing when you go on board with them. The current standings in Cup 2 class is Asha Racing. Markus Jirak is the driver at the moment, sharing the car with Martin Ascher himself. They are leading since lap number one, having also pole position. Just here and there, a little change um, during the lap, but uh, all in all, they are leading since lap number one. Then we have now see again the fight of we and SE Motorsport and Asher, both of them, they are fighting since a couple of laps for first and second positions. So Markus Hirak and Niklas Last. Very close fights, action-packed fights, but always fair. And uh, we see clouds coming as we have mostly cloudy weather conditions um, which is 
sometimes not easy for drivers as the driver uh, as the track is also dynamic in the track conditions but here we see that fight that very nice fight in a the Cup 2 class. So still that's the fight for first and second position and we go on board a little bit with the D911 G3 Cup car of VNS the Motorsport. And while we are in uh, or having a focus on the Koche car, we see Marius Gollum back uh, sharing the car with Pascal Stix. Uh, Pascal is still uh, is now driving the car, and uh, Marius is uh, I think he's in the interview in the German the German channel. Uh, we have uh, also a guest here in our stream. And uh, I would like to welcome Steen Ledger. Steen, uh, thank you very much that you made your way here to us. Um, Steen, you are uh, with your car. Um, you're sharing the car with Lars Bohl. And um, you are at the moment in a fifth position in, uh, in uh, your class. So how, how is the race going so far? Um, started off fastest in qualifying at the cars that didn't have a draft or two CMRC guys were very smart with using the two cars that they have to get block out the front row. Uh, lap one round the tried to even make a move on the CMRC's Pro Sim team and had a little went around the outside of Schrading Koitz and ended up in the grass. So lost a fair bit of time there. And then later on the collision that uh, very much was poor between us and the CMRC car into Horn Ryan Chicane. And I felt there was nothing we could do, but race control says otherwise. So a bit, a bit further back than we should be. And um, what do you expect uh, from uh, all the things happening in uh, the beginning of the race? I mean, we are all we are just halfway through. Uh, what do you expect to to uh, going on for the for the second half of the race? Uh, second half looks like Lars's pace is very strong at the moment, closing up on the CMRC car to get back to third place in SP3T. Um, should be hopefully get the move done before he finishes driving his stint and I think the gap to Team Hosingveld and Team RC after um, getting the penalised uh, for being told not to race feels a bit unfair but we don't think we can close up a 40 second gap to them um, so had there not been a penalty I think it could have been a good three car fight for the win but not to be uh, we are we are also not only halfway through the through the race here um, this time, uh, but also halfway through after this race, halfway through the championship and uh, through the calendar. Uh, you are still uh, second in uh, the championship, only three three points uh, behind Simar, the Simar three the C guys. Um, so, what what should be the the goal and what should be um, the the strategy for the rest of the season? Full attack or uh, what is uh, what is your your opinion about it? I think the CMRC guys, it's very clear, they're, they're a tough lot to beat around here. They've got, they're dry, the two drivers are very much nailed in with Jürgen and uh, Felix. It's, they're, they're not an easy combination at any track, let alone Notch Life. Um, I think it'll be tough to catch back up in the championship just based on um, the fact that we won't score where we felt we should today. 
uh, we probably third place and then I think it's a bit hard to come back because then we'll end up after this race with a five point deficit. Uh, it'll be a bit tough to come back in two rounds. Um, but give a, I think it'll be a good fight with Hosingbert for second in the championship. I think today when we all three cars were in clear air and we're all lapping within half a second of each other, I think it could end up being a good fight for the championship and it could come down to last round um, between Hosingbelt and us for second place in the points mm. and maybe last lap overtake into Hohenrein. Mm. What is what is this so special? Because we see in SB3T always so close and action-packed fights. Um, it feels like even more than in all the other classes. Um, what is what is so special? Why, why do we see that, especially in SB3T? I think in SB3T we've got three teams that are very evenly matched. Um, in terms of one lap pace, where, as I said earlier, we were lapping within half a second of each other around a nine minute lap time. That's, in terms of percentage wise, is incredibly close. Um, but there's also the fact that these cars, especially up the hill towards Mutkova, they run out of steam quite, we don't gain a lot of speed up past 200 kilometers an hour. So the draft effect is really strong, and especially down Dottinger as well, where going up the hill past the tourist fast entrance the car slows down because it's just it doesn't have any more horsepower so being in the draft you can really close up and it keeps the pack really close together and the forgiving nature of the front wheel drive car means if you have a little tap or you're fighting with someone you can the rear end will step out and you don't end up into a spin because you can just hit the accelerator to straighten the car up it means the cars are a bit more easier to race and follow each other because there's a little bit less risk involved in terms of making a mistake that way That, that, is, that is quite interesting, and also um, we, we, we love to see we love to see the SP3 T class uh, coming back to you yourself. And uh, next week um, we have the um, we have another endurance race, uh, not on the Nordschleife, but uh, at the 24 Daytona. Do you do you also uh, drive there? Um, plan would be to yes. I'm having uh, some struggles with my wheelbase at the moment. Uh, We had this in the Seventic race where I had a trouble with the wheel base costing us position in SP3T as well. But probably have a go maybe in Sunny a little bit quicker. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, uh, Steve, for, for your visit. I'm um, very much uh, um, looking forward to see you guys also maybe climbing up a little more um, after the trouble in the beginning of the race uh, here in the standings. So uh, thank you very much for, for joining us here. And uh, you go for one more stint in the car or is it, are you done for, for today? Yep, so I have to do one more stint to the finish. Uh, hopefully, it will, will be a bit more trouble free. Crossing fingers for you, Steen Ledger in uh, the Frozen Speed car in SB3T. Thank you very much, and um, I'll see you and uh, hear you in a bit. So, that was the um, driver of the Frozen Speed car, and we just continue with our interviews, and uh, there's another guy here in uh, the channel. Uh, it's Jan Zentkowski from uh, uh, the Heusingfeld car in SP9. And Jan, uh, I just talked about that a uh, couple laps uh, be before. As we saw, it, all the BMWs, and as I know you are such an, a strategy guy, um, <laughs> all the BMWs um, had to pit after seven laps. And uh, you guys, you did eight laps. Um, and I know you are all always strong in uh, in your in your strategy as you did also in a dns one and two uh, quite an interesting uh, strategy so how can that work out for you guys um, is that an advantage for you the 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 seven and eight lap strategies um i think so um because we predicted our 23 laps in the race um so yeah with every lap you're going You're able to go longer, you need less fuel at the end, so the shorter pit stop. So yeah, you might fall back now after the the first and second stint, or maybe end up uh, then in front at the end. Um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting still, because um, I think it's just a few seconds and that separates us from 22 or 23 laps. So yeah, it depends on the pace, it's let the leaders go from now on until the end. Um, yeah, so it's going to be tight, and up until then, I can't really tell where we are. Um, 
t tell us because because it's all about strategy here in such an in endurance uh, race and even though when you have uh, such uh, strong competitors uh, with uh, the BMW guys uh, for example um, how many windows do you have open on your screen to to manage that because you say okay predicted is uh, 23 laps and then you have to watch your car you you, you watch the strategy of the other cars so uh, how can we imagine uh, what is on um, Team Heusingfeld uh, screens going on uh, at, at the moment? <laughs> um, so yeah, there's uh, the uh, yeah, eye racing open where we can look up the pace of the other cars stuff. So just looking where they are uh, in terms of also uh, traffic. So maybe sometimes getting a lap earlier uh, might be worth because you don't hit traffic. Then uh, again, like what, like what you would uh, lap later when another class pit. So yeah, that you have to keep in mind. Then there's yeah, some Excel stuff at this table and, and looking how much you will be using per lap, um, looking how much you have left for every other lap. Um, yeah, just asking the driver also often about the tires on the car fields because yeah, we're still trying to work out with these Uh, new tires, how to, to make them last long, and it seems like we've made a step forward again. Uh, Matt is closing in on, on the car up front, um, who's yeah, on nearly the same strategy, but, but I think a bit lower in fuel. Um, so, yeah, it's, that's one part, and then you, you just mentioned the uh, um, the, the The, the understanding of uh, tires. Uh, we had an update um, of uh, iRacing uh, on uh, Thursday, if I'm uh, if I'm right. Um, and with an adjustment of BOP, did that hit you guys, or um, was that uh, like equal for for all the SP9 cars? Um, I mean the iRacing uh, general um, BOP adjustment. Yeah, it was definitely not uh, the same for every car. Um, it was definitely, uh, I think, a bigger hit for the BMWs. Um, they use a bit more fuel now, as far as I know, but I do also have a little bit more downforce. And we in AMG, we just have a bit more downforce. So, and I think it's slightly reduced uh, fuel usage. Um, so yeah, we will save the fuel then from, from the beginning on uh, to make the eight laps happen. Um, and yeah, yeah, that update also helped us. And I think the Lamborghini is also a bit reduced fuel rate, I'm not sure. Um, but that's all and for the cars in this race, it must be nine cars. Uh, one, one more question about Adam Christodoulou. I, I just <laughs> mentioned a couple minutes before that uh, he finished third in GT4 class at the, the Dubai 24 hour. Yeah. So um, he's quite happy, but. He's now going anywhere in Dubai, finding a simulator to race for the last 10. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah, um, he, he didn't have to go far, to be honest. Um, he was also practicing a bit during the week uh, when he was preparing the 24-hour race there in Dubai. Uh, in the garage of his team, where he ran the 24-hour race with, uh, I think, Dragon Racing. They have a simulator for Assetto Corsa, and he Uh, ask them if you can uh, drive an eye racing race there on Saturday after the just the 24 hour race is finished and so yeah he headed back now to the garage he's doing some preparation now uh, he's a bit or quite a bit slower than uh, he was in, in the last races because yeah different simulator completely different uh, setup with pedals and stuff so yeah we're happy that we can run together today with him and yeah we'll hope just that we go to the end and that's that would be a great result for us uh, to yeah, just go through the season with with him Th that is amazing this is uh, just pretty uh, he's, he's crazy yeah he's, he's just <laughs> crazy but you guys also to um, um, to, to do that and to make that happen so uh, Jan Zentkowski uh, we we uh, Uh, we have just had in the interview from uh, the uh, Team Heusingfeld car. So, Jan, thank, thank you very much for visiting us and uh, taking the time. And uh, now no back to your screens <laughs> and uh, calculating <laughs> yeah. strategy and uh, supporting uh, Adam Christodoulou. So, thank you very much. 
and um, good luck for, for the rest of the race. Thank you. And we go in a couple of seconds into a short break and we'll come back for the last little more than one hour uh, here at the, the NLS.
And here we are back again at the Digital Nürburgring Endurance Series presented by Goodyear. We are in the last 73 minutes of the TÜV Rheinland three-hour race and we see the fight for fifth and sixth position. And that's the Chorus Sim Racing Lamborghini with Haupt Racing Team AM Solutions. Still Sintra Setzas and Florian Denzler driving these cars at the moment. We just heard before the break Jan Zentkowski. He was uh, guiding us through some strategy points and also Adam Christodoulou preparing for his last stint from Dubai. And so uh, we are ready for that last hour uh, waiting for the pit stops as the BMWs most probably have to come into pit lane after seven laps uh, which is in about four laps to go and then we uh, see the Lamborghini and the uh, Mercedes about one lap later. Class leaders, still SP9 class, uh, is uh, still Male uh, in uh, the Cup 2 is Asha Racing and in uh, then we have Kobe with Pascal Sticks in uh, SP10 and in SP3T it's at the moment Bernina Racing Team That's the uh, car of uh, Team uh, BMW Bank. And uh, Bruno Spengler is uh, driving that car. While Alex Arana took over the car, oh, there was, there was, I'm sorry, there was already the pit stops done um, of uh, the uh, some of the BMWs in the uh, Marle Racing Team. Um, Alex Arana um, took over the car from Sami Mati Drogen and Elias Zepanen from uh, Laurin Heinrich. So that's why Team. BMW Bank is leading and here we have BS competition number 89 Elias Zepanen in uh, the uh, BMW M4 GT3 again they left quite early uh, they pitted quite early while uh, Bruno Spengler stays out. And as we heard, uh, Jan Zentkowski, uh, that car is in the, on the same strategy. So that BMW Bank team is on the same strategy as Heusingfeld, most probably. And they are here. They are the, the BS competition. They have to come one more time uh, to into the pit lane while... Maybe. I'm just thinking about it. I'm just thinking about uh, the, the strategy. Um, maybe um, Heusingfeld only has to do one more stint. Oh, so one more pit stop. So um, I mean, that, is, that is very, very much interesting how that will work out. And um, while I see Male and BS for sure, one more stint, one more time in the pit lane. Um, I don't see Haupt Racing Team Heusingfeld uh, 
for more than one time again while we see here in third position Alex Arana in uh, working in his simulator in his rig so uh, he's uh, the driver of that Marle racing team car running in at third position it's quite sweaty it looks like um, to be honest I couldn't sit there in a hoodie mm. and when, when I when I remember I was driving um, I was sweating so much um, I could almost do it uh, topless but uh, because it's it's so exhausting and you're sweating so much and he's sitting there in a hoodie um, that's it's quite interesting um, but coming back to racing, I'm here lapping the, uh, the cars from uh, Cup 2. That was the MRS car. And uh, maybe we see Team BMW Bank for them pit stop in pit lane uh, at the end of this lap or maybe they can do one more if if they can do one more lap uh, they are they have an advantage to Alex Arana and Sami Mati Drogen and also to Laurin Heinrich and Elias Sepanen um, so these two guys here because um, then they um, gain one, uh, one pit stop but it's just thinking about it and uh, let's see as uh, Bruno Spengler is on the Döttinger Höhe and he is uh, if he is going into pit lane or not as we have so they have to go they have to break the one minute uh, one hour mark when if they break the one hour mark they can do they have to do only one more pit stop or only this one pit stop uh, Spengler goes to the right hand side okay Spengler goes into pit now and I think then also Heusingfeld comes into pit now Heusingfeld stays out Heusingfeld stays out and um, I just can tell you because um, they just uh, made the move um, in uh, the standings and uh, while we are here on that uh, fight uh, for 7th and 8th position and uh, we just saw that uh, BMW team Great Britain Jesse Grohn um, overtook Gabriele Piana so now at the moment just to, to clarify that we have Mats Torkels Hutzfeld in front in front of uh, Mal uh, racing team Alex Arana and then we have VS Competition, Elias Sepanen. So that's the order right now. And as Team Heusingfeld did, or is doing one more lap, they go under one hour. And I think, if I am right, they only have to do one more pit stop in the next lap. And if they do that one more pit stop in the next lap, whoa, whoa, whoa. A close fight between Krohn and Piana. Piana is doing the same as they do, as he is doing <laughs> in real life racing um, so being aggressive and uh, trying to, to push and put pressure now Piana comes into pit lane while Jesse Krohn stays out but um, I think they already have done their two pit stops and uh, so, yeah, that's uh, going to be very interesting how that works out for uh, the leading pack. Uh, we are here with the uh, BMW team Great Britain. That's the uh, that's Jesse Krohn and Alessandro Vico. Now on board with Jesse Krohn.
And Jesse Crone, he uh, uh, is having a special ambient light in his room. <laughs> so uh, uh, maybe he likes it cozy uh, with his red light. Or maybe that everybody knows when they enter the room, he's uh, on air. Uh, so <laughs> that he's uh, driving now. Um, so that's Jesse Crone uh, up left in the split screen. Uh, and we see him driving himself and uh, also on board in the car in his BMW. And uh, they are running, as you can see, sixth in uh, the current standings. And that's the fight with the Frozen Speed car. We uh, just had Steen Ledger in the interview with us. And that's the SP3T class, fourth, third and fourth. So Sim RC, Marvin Strehl and Lars Bohl. Lars Bohl tries now to make the move at area Kesselchen Klostertal. And he can make the pass. Now, Frozen Beat in third position. Here we go. The rear camera. Having a closer look to Sim RC. Marvin Strehl. And his Audi RS3 LMS. In the championship, uh, as we just said, the Frozen Speed's second and uh, Marvin Strehl. So that's the fir first and second here in the championship. Frozen Speed second with 15.01 and Sim RC, um, the blue labeled detail car, um, is in first position with 18.76 points. So. Here in the race, they are in third and fourth. In the championship, they are first and second. While no, I'm I'm wrong. Sorry, Jürgen Frank. Sorry, that's the other car. Sorry, that's the sister car. So the, the red labeled car. It's uh, the the leading pack. Now uh, it's the leading car in the championship. Frozen Speed second, but here the Pro Sim. So the Sim RC Pro Sim. Um, and they are in fourth position in uh, the championship. So now we are under one hour to go in the TIF Rheinland three hour race here at the Digital Nürburgring Endurance Championship, powered by or presented by Goodyear. And uh, at the moment, we have a Mercedes AMG GT3 leading in SP9. We have uh, H2 Performance SRT leading in uh, Cup 2. We have the uh, Corusim Racing crew uh, in uh, their Porsche Cayman leading in SP10. And here in uh, SP3T, we have Sim RC. Um, Leading Jürgen Frank is driving there. Uh, we have leading them in this class. So these are the leaders. And uh, now um, I'm very much interested in if Team Heusingfeld is pitting now. I think they have to pit now to, uh, to, to do their last pit stop. So they only have to do that one pit stop while Male and BS have to do one more pit stop. So here we go. That's the leader of the race. And uh, that's the... Uh, that's Mats Torge Hutzfeld at the moment. And he will hand over now the car to... Adam Christodoulou, live from Dubai from the 24-hour race and 
Let's see. We are under 58 minutes. Again, again, they don't have to do one more pit stop after that. So that works out. That works out for me that uh, with their 23 laps, um, uh, Jan Zenkowski just told us, that means seven laps to go. Eight laps to go after this one. It's It should work out perfectly. Seven laps to go. And from now on, seven laps to go. Here we go. Male racing team. They are now leading the race again. Alex Arana is the driver. And uh, second now, Elias Zepanen, he has competition. But both of them have to come one more time into the pit lane. Here we see that is a Team BMW Bank. Mm. Kai Kaschube once again, as Niels Koch is not sharing the car with Bruno Spengler and Kai. So it's Kai Kaschube, then uh, Bruno Spengler and Kai Kaschube once again. At, at the moment, everything seems a little settled now. It's all up to the strategy. And uh, we just have to wait another 55 minutes to see if that works out for the Team Heusingfeld, Adam Christodoulou crew or for Male, or for BS. Core Sim Racing in the third position. Also having done their pit stop, I think. Yeah, they have to. Or maybe they were out for one, even one more lap. Maybe also Core Sim Racing is playing a, a, a major role. Not only this car, Adam Christodoulou, <laughs> again, from Dubai, um, in a simulator he just borrowed. And, um, or is it also Core Sim Racing in, his, in their Lamborghini? Um, having a chance to win the race because of strategy. Haupt Racing Team Heusingfeld again on a special strategy in their in the class SP9 because that's what they say that they say that's the the only the only way we can uh, uh, have a have a try on the strong lineups of a BMW. And so, uh, the 
and uh, so that's uh, that's that's why they do such strategies um, and they really work out um, they, they, they sit every day and work and uh, having a look on the data to know exactly what strategy uh, they can do so and uh, maybe that works out once again We make the jump into Cup 2 class. And we see Wolf Motorsport Sim Racing with Jörg Papsch in 11th position in a cup two and uh, i just got the confirmation from uh, one of the drivers of the leading drivers i'm uh, just uh, trying to figure out what is going on and uh, they say uh, it's gonna be very close if they do one more or less lap um, so, uh, what we see here, Jörg Papsch in his seat, in his rig. And so, uh, while checking a little bit of strategy for you guys uh, in, uh, in the background. Um, we see still Jörg Papsch having fun, smiling <laughs> in the simulator. I would love to see uh, P Patrick, uh, Patrick and uh, Olli driving also uh, in the simulator. And I think that's... Uh, that would be one thing we need to see at the end of the season. And uh, while everything, as I said, is quite settled and um, quite a big gaps, we still have Marius Zug fighting, uh, or the BS competition. Uh, Marius Zug is sharing uh, the car there. Um, with um, Robert Heger and they are fighting for second and third position with the team RSO Pasc uh, mit, uh, Nils Lorenz and uh, so that's the closest fight at the, man at the moment on the track for second and third position in SP10 class Nils Carstensen had the fight with Marius Zug and now it's Robert Heger who is fighting with Nils Lorenz here. BS Competition versus Team RSO. So we see Mark Henerizzi driving in the 911 Cup car and uh, see him in split screen also. Driving with the quite concentrated and
and uh, there we see him on track as well. Mark is uh, pushing more and more in uh, sim racing again. He started a couple of years ago and uh, quite a long time ago. And uh, now he's back at it. And I'm uh, driving even more and more and more. And uh, doing now his second DNLS race. And also having done the ADAC Sim Racing Cup. And now he's smiling uh, because maybe he just saw that, <laughs> that he's, uh, he's on screen. Uh, maybe he, that's why he is looking there and uh, looking uh, fully concentrated and looking uh, very much professional, <laughs> Mark. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so uh, that's in a Cup 2 class. They are in Cup 2 class in... Uh, ninth position and quite alone on the track here we see the cup car of Mark Henneritzi. and then we have a replay of Mark Henneritzi with a crash at uh, the big jump of uh, Pflanzgarten uh, went off track there a little touch with the barrier So uh, maybe that influenced a little bit the car of uh, him. Uh, we see here on the right hand side, we see a little damage as well. Then we go into class SP10. Keep on racing our ambition STS car, Loris Brock in a sixth position at the moment. And that's the leader of Cup 2 class uh, while Um, where is Asher racing? Um, Martin Asher or Irak? He is there. Okay, there's a little gap in between both of them. So uh, VNS e Motorsport can um, make the gap bigger. By Martin Asher, by they were in pit lane. So Asher is again in the car. Niklas Last is in the VS car. So that's going to be interesting now, as maybe VS is coming into pit lane now also for their final pit stop. So we will stay on there and have a look if Niklas Last coming into pit lane now for their final pit stop and then we see where they will end up so he goes to the right hand side yes pit stop now for v and s e motorsport by h2p and now let's see where he will end up and uh, in the close fight with Usher racing Mar martin Usher himself Butler Pal is second, but they have to come now into pit lane, I think, till Norvig. Or they or they have to do one more pit stop. Now they do the pit stop, correct? So um, next one is Sim RC Cup 2, Simon Korsman. Uh, but they are not uh, in the fight uh, of the uh, top runners. That's uh, that car here, Simon Korsman. And uh, 
Usher Racing. That's the car we are waiting for. Here we go. Simon C. Simon Grossmann come, comes into pit lane. And H2 Performance SRT most probably is coming to pit lane as well. No, they stay out. H2 Performance taking over the lead now. But uh, I guess they have to come one more time into pit lane. So, so here we go. There is Usher coming. And there is VNS. There is VNS. Here we see Usher. And VNS is coming out of pit lane. And that's the fight for the championship. Uh, for for the, the victory of the, of the race. That's uh, these two cars. They are fighting for the win. Um, as while uh, H2 Performance, SRT, is not um, in that fight, I guess, because they have to come into pit lane one more time. And so that's going to be very close. Now in the VNS car is still, uh, is again Dennis Aras Fabri. We see him here. Yeah, maybe there's uh, still... Uh, some stuff from uh, Christmas, I guess, uh, behind him. <laughs> and uh, fully concentrated. Then is Aras Fabri in his cup car. And uh, he has having a look into the mirror. See Martin Asher. And he knows how to fight with him because that was the fight in the beginning of the race as well. And... Here we are on board with Martin Asher from Asher Racing. Now that's going to be very, very much interesting how they will fight. Aras Fabri. And his. Car, the 911 Cup car. Just checking um, if the uh, Butler Pal car but they are too far back, so they lost too much. And they are too far back. It seems like that uh, behind these two. So they will fight for the win. And they will fight for the win, but behind there it seems like H2 Performance SRT and uh, most probably MRS fighting for the uh, third place behind them. see here very nice on board of Dennis Aras Fabri to SP10 class and we see BS competition Robert Heger and RN Vision
Dr. Maximilian Dehn and Marius Zug fighting here. And while we while we have a look on the SP10 class, we have another guest here. It's uh, one of the drivers of the Cup 2 class, uh, Sebastian Fiedelak. And maybe um, he can tell us what happened in qualifying because you guys you did not set a lap time. Um, was it? Because I, I just saw in uh, an iRacing itself uh, that uh, you got a disconnect. Uh, is that right? Uh, yes. So, uh, firstly, hello. And, uh, welcome to the digital BLM live stream. So, uh, we're very happy to be here. And, yeah, our driver, um, our first driver, did not, wasn't able to uh, complete the lap. He got some off tracks. Um, during his qualifying lap because yeah, the conditions were very tricky for him to, to cope with and uh, yeah, on top of that we uh, he, he got into the pit lane from the launch lap and we got a drive through for the first lap so yeah, race was pretty much over in the first lap. Okay, so that was what what happened um, in, right in the beginning because we were wondering um, why you are so far uh, back there because uh, usually we know you are um, right at the front pack um, fighting with them. Uh, also, we see here still the fight for um, for the for the victory in in your class, Asha Racing and VNS in Motorsport. So, um, and how did the the, the race went uh, after that uh, first couple of issues? Uh, pretty much very good. Um, these guys at the front in the Cup 2 class are very, very fast. The, especially uh, Martin Asche and uh, Thomas Asmussen. And today is uh, a new name. I think he didn't drive before. Dennis Aras Fabri. He did a very good job in, in, in the opening laps. And yeah, these guys are very, very fast. But um, our first driver, René, is very fast as well and can, can go with these guys. Um, yeah, my job in the second stint then it is to just not crash the car and keep the keep the distance as close as possible so that we can have a chance. But yeah, today it was very difficult. Temperatures are very high again, so the car is very very slidey. The cup Porsche is, is very tricky to drive on a notch life um, either way. But yeah, today with the very high temperatures, it's, it's very difficult to drive again. Uh, one more question, because then we go into uh, the uh, into a short break. Uh, but you are uh, fifth in the championship, Sebastian, um, and uh, with your team in the Green Esports, um, nine points behind the leader. So what what can what can uh, happen in in the championship? What do you think? Uh, I think for to to fight um, for the championship on raw pace, um, we are not able to because uh, yeah, I'm pretty much about five to six seconds slower than the, the real fast guys at the top. But our job is to make no mistakes. Like today, we did mistakes, and uh, this will cost some points for sure. So um, yeah, the biggest biggest issue is to make no mistakes over the uh, over the season um, over this short season. Um, but with the Cup Porsche on the Nordsch Life, anything can happen. So you can crash out. Did you just lose the respect of the Nordsch Life or for the Nordsch Life one second and you crash out? Um, I have a five minute pit stop and your race is gone. So yeah, just keep on going, keep, uh, keep our head down and, and don't do any mistakes. That's uh, Sebastian Fiedelak from uh, Team Nürburgring Esports. Thank you very much for the short interview. We just go into the break, but uh, for the news, and now we are uh, we know what happened uh, just in the beginning of the race. Thank you very much, Sebastian. Thank and, you, Jan. Um, uh, crossing fingers for you guys, and we will go into a short break of the Digital Nürburgring Endurance Series presented by Goodyear, but we will leave you with a split screen so you can follow the action still on the screen.
Here we are, back at the Digital Nürburgring Endurance Championship, presented by Goodyear for the last 29 minutes. And we are on the leader. We are here with Male Racing Team and Sami Mati Drogen, who is leading the race. And uh, that's going to be very interesting because um, we just got the information that Male and for sure BS have to go, have to come into pit lane one more time. So Male and BS, they have to do one more pit stop. Why? My guess, my guess is why we see here Kai Kaschube um, in uh, Team BMW Bank, um, Mercedes, uh, BMW M4 GT3. Well, my guess is that uh, Heusingfeld doesn't have to come. Here, they have to. BS, they have to come into pit lane one more time as well. They are in third position, 17 seconds behind, and that's the Heusingfeld car with Adam Christodoulou um, now at the um, steering wheel. Um, they most probably can stay out until the end of the race. So that's uh, so far um, what is going on under the top four. Then we have a team, um, a BMW team Great Britain. Um, Jesse Krohn is sharing the car there with um, Alessandro Bico. And the Jesse Krohn is here driving the car at the moment right now. Behind that car, ah, Alessandro Bico is driving the car at the moment. Uh, so that's Bico we, we just see here. And he is uh, driving on that BMW M4 GT3. Then we have the best Lamborghini. For sim racing, Carl Jansson, start driver, is again in the car now for the last stint. And most probably also they, or he, we see him here, he can stay out as well. So that's going to be very interesting, strategy wise. What is uh, happening there? Why? Crash! Live crash of the Mercedes AMG GT3 of the um, Manfilter Team HCP Winward. Marvin Deans is the driver there, so he just lost the car there in that fast left-hander. So... And we are back here with Carl Jansson. in his car Lamborghini. So that's uh, what is going on in SP9 at the moment. 25 minutes and 40 seconds left in uh, this uh, TÜV Rheinland three-hour race. And we are still on the uh, Lamborghini three Lamborghini entries we have. It's Corpus Sim Racing. It's H and R. And it's ERC powered by FSP to Rheinland. Oh, these are the Lamborghini entries here at the DNLS. For this third round, halfway through the season we are And it's uh, going to be very interesting how strategy works. Us. It's all about strategy. It's not about the, the, the main speed, the ground speed. It's uh, mainly about strategy. If Male, BMW Bank and uh, the BS competition can stay in front of Heusingfeld, they have a gap of... 42 seconds. Heusingfeld to Male. While we are here in focus with Mercedes, with Mercedes AMG GT3 of Haupt Racing Team AM Solutions, Dirk, Dirk Müller 
is the driver there. Also doing, since last year, quite a lot of sim racing stuff. And we see the replay of Marvin Dienst. And there, with the right-hand side into the grass, and then he could not keep the car on the track. Uh, major damage in front, but uh, they already had, in the beginning of the race, um, one crash. Uh, so that's why they uh, were not in uh, the fight for the, the win and the victory here at the three-hour race. Again, that's the leader. That's uh, Male Racing Team, Sami Matti Trogen. They are leading by two and a half seconds in front of uh, Kai Kaschube here in Team BMW Bank car. And then another BMW behind them with already 15 seconds behind Kaschube. It's Laurin Heinrich. He's sharing the car with Elias Sepanen. But these two here, that's Kaschube. You see in the split screen. These two, they are fighting for the win. And uh, Kashuba is pushing hard last lap time, uh, two seconds faster, two and a half seconds faster than uh, Sami Matti Trogen. They gained quite a lot there. Now we are here on board once again with him on the roof camera. And we go down into Fuchsröhre. From the outside and now into Adenauer Force. Nice cameras here. And you can see how fast they go through that area here at Adenauer Forst. They are away of the curbs on the outside. You can use them. And then we can see Kashube is gaining more and more. So the, the gap between Sami Mati Drogen and Kai Kashube is getting closer and closer with almost 21 minutes to go. It's three laps. Three laps to go for them. And we switch into Cup 2 class here, V and S E Motorsport. Dennis Aras Fabri still in front of Martin Ascher. In, in between, uh, right before our break, they changed positions. But now, again, Aras Fabri in front of Ascher. H2 Performance SRT. Thomas Asmussen, he's in front of both of them. But now I'm very much wondering if maybe because of also here strategy, um, we could make the move. Well, without, uh, we, we, we saw that. So that's, uh, that's interesting. So at the moment it's H2 performance SRT, Thomas Asmussen in front of V and S E Motorsport by H2. P. Dennis Aras Fabri and Martin Ascher for Ascher Racing. That's the top three in Cup 2 class. Blitz screen still Male versus Team BMW Bank. 1.7 seconds only the gap now.
and the gap is getting smaller and smaller while we still see here on the on the large screen the cup two fight in the small window it's 1.4 seconds so a, another three tenths of a second closer together it's the first and second position in the race of the TÜV Einland three-hour race. So here they come in Cup 2 class and it looks like that we only have two laps to go. It's going to be very, very close. It's going to be very, very close if we see them for two more or three more laps. So, you see there, Cup 2 class is very close together now. And there is the attack of uh, Dennis Aras Fabri on the outside on uh, Thomas Asmussen. Asmussen defends on the inside. Aras Fabri uh, makes the move on the outside. Aras Fabri is taking over now first position from Thomas Asmussen. And also Martin Ascher makes the move. So now, now it's Aras Fabri in front of Ascher and Asmussen. That's the top three in a Cup 2 class. And here we go. That's the fight for the lead of the race. Sami Mati Drogen in the Mahler Racing Team BMW in front of Kaika Schube. And now we probably see the attack. And 16 minutes and 15 seconds. 16 minutes and 15 seconds means we go for another three laps. Three laps we go. And that means the calculation of Heusingfeld was probably right. We are in lap, we, we finished lap 20. And uh, now it's just a couple of seconds which decide whether we go one more lap or one lap less. Again, back in Cup 2 class, still Dennis Aras, Fabri, Martin Ascher and Thomas Asmussen. Asher is still waiting for a chance to make the move on the 911 Cup car of Aras Fabri from V&S Motorsports. Here we see them very close. So that's the top three. Again, that's top three in the Cup 2 class.
switching to SP9 class. Corvus Sim Racing is closing the gap, or has closed the gap to BMW Team Great Britain. Alessandro Bico is the driver in the BMW, and that guy here, Carl Jansson, is the driver in the Lamborghini. And uh, he tries to move on the outside at Schwedenkreuz, but uh, there it is not possible. Uh, not in the SP9 class with the GT3 cars. So uh, Jansson is talking to his teammates. Dindris Hetzas is uh, his teammate. And he is uh, talking, they are talking how they can find a way past the BMW for fifth position then. And again, calculation a little bit in the background. Uh, we should see the two BMWs in front, or mainly number four and 89, so Male and BS, uh, in the pit lane after this lap. I I guess they coming into pit lane after this lap. Well, we see a replay here from uh, Asher and uh, Aras Fabri on the outside. And that left kink, does he really do it? On the outside and Asher goes wide onto the grass, but he makes the move. Asher makes the move on the grass for the lead. So now Asher is in front of Aras Fabri, so, and that will, will not be, that won't be the last time they overtake each other. Back live with Corvus in racing. And they are trying on uh, the BMW here at Bergwerk, he tries to move late on the brakes. And Jansson makes the move. There's a little smile on his face. There's a little smile on his face, but uh, typical Scandinavian. Not very much. But he knows exactly that uh, it is not over yet. Two more laps to go. So uh, now it's Alessandro Bico putting pressure on Jansson. So, as we are going into the uh, Carousel and around the carousel. The leaders are at the area of Landsgarten. And we will have a look on the second screen. So we'll have here a look on the, my data screen if they go into pit lane or not. And 9 minutes and 20 seconds left here at the third round of the Digital Nürburgring Endurance Championship. Team BMW Bank, Kaika Schube, as he overtook Sami Mati Drogen one lap ago, or as we went into this lap. He is the leader in front of the named Drogen. And then Laurin Heinrich with a 16 seconds gap. So we should see Heinrich there. Heinrich is at the Audi bridge. While we see here at uh, Antonius Buche is uh, Kaschube. And 
Through Hohen Rhein Chicane. Does he come into the pit lane? No. He stays out. He stays out for one more lap. He stays out. Also, Mahle Racing Team stays out for one more lap. That's that that will be a close call. That will be a very close call. Well, we see here the uh, the car of the Lamborghini Huracan GT3 Evolution of ERC powered by FSP to Rheinland. Max Montermann is the driver and in front of their car that's the uh, quite heavily damaged Mercedes AMG GT3 of Unfilter HCP Winward. That's the TIFF Rheinland car and as we are driving with them we are having a look in the other, other classes um, again everything seems settled so far Cup 2 is still fighting uh, while in SP10 everything is settled, it seems, and also in SP3T. Montermann is uh, closing the gap to Marvin Dienst with his damaged car. So it's for uh, 12th and 13th position. That's uh, VNS Motorsport. Dennis Aras Fabri only in third position. What happened there? Uh, also quite alone on the track. And it looks like that he had a crash. The car looks damaged. And something happened there. Something happened with this car because uh, here you can see quite good on the left hand side. There is the damage. And something happened to Dennis Aras Fabri. Because he was in the fight with Martin Asher. And uh, Aras Fabri looks also quite exhausting. So, anything happened there, we don't know exactly what happened, but uh, he's only in third position with a damaged car now. Okay, again, having a look to the front runners while we are still on Dennis Aras, Aras Fabri. And you can see how he is fighting with his 911 GT3 Cup car. And we see here, that's the replay. We just touched the grass a little bit. Went on the grass. 
and then he and then he had contact with an SP3T an SP10 car and another time twice with a sim RC that's a sim RC car oh whoa whoa I think race control doesn't really like to see that. And uh, maybe, uh, and if I see it right, number 20, 228 uh, gets a drive through penalty for unsafe rejoin with collision. So, um, again, just to inform you, we uh, we see the third position car in uh, Cup 2 within a penalty while we are here with Team BMW Bank. And Kai Kaschube. in uh, the area of Ice Corner. But does it last with their fuel capacity? Or do they, ha do they have to come one more time into pit lane? So that is the, the question we have. While Heinrich is uh, losing, Heinrich is losing time in third position. So at the moment it's uh, Kashuba, who is the fastest. Last lap eight minutes one second point eight zero six. Sami Mati Trogen eight minutes four point four zero seven. Laurin Heinrich eight minutes. Three seconds, point five seven four. Here we see again the the BMW. And he's lapping the Schnitzel Alm car on eleventh position. Okay, 30 seconds left in the three-hour race. We are at Hohenrein Chicane, and there is one more lap to go. And they're coming into pit lane. They have to go into pit lane for a splash and dash. Here we go. And that's the chance for this Car. Male stays out. Male stays out. And also BS stays out. So the only ones who went into pit lane is a team BMW Bank. Heusingfeld is fighting against the Lamborghini of Carl Jansson. There's the fight for fourth and fifth position. And here they are, slipstream a little bit of the SB10 car. Of keep on racing. And now Adam Christodoulou defending. On the inside of turn number one, on the outside is Karl Jansson. Advantage for Christo Dulu in the first try. We are in the final lap. We are in the final lap of the TÜV Rheinland three-hour race. And we see the fight for the fourth and fifth in SP9 class. And here we go. There we saw the little touch 
from Carl Jansson against Adam Christodoulou. Almost, he almost spun Christodoulou around. And then also a little damage on Christodoulou's car. So Christodoulou went from fourth to sixth as also BMW team Great Britain, Alessandro Pico went through. So let's see if anything happens from race control because of this incident. And again, that's the replay here. Jansson tries to go to the inside and then... Ay, 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 ay. Uh, he, tries, he tries to make the move, but uh, to be honest, a real gap wasn't there. So uh, uh, maybe he could have waited a little longer. Maybe to give it a try in the chicane or... Um, later here on the lap, but uh, there he just he just spun Adam Chris to around. Jesse Crone, we are on board with. I better say, Sami Mati Trogen. In uh, Male Racing Team BMW M4 GT3. It's the leader of the race. And they have a gap to the second position car of a BS competition of about 20 seconds, a little more than 20 seconds. And then in the third position is Team BMW Bank. Core Sim Racing with a Lamborghini in fourth and Another BMW in fifth position. Again, here that's Chris Dulu putting pressure on that fifth position BMW. Adam Chris Dulu in his Mercedes AMG GT3. Okay, so that's uh, that move, as you saw, the um, Lamborghini was because Adam, because of that touch, because uh, Carl Jansson had to change position with Adam Christodoulou, that was the information from race control, and now we see here Alessandro Pico is now in fourth position. Behind there, that's Adam Christodoulou. And right behind there, that's the Lamborghini of Core Sim Racing, Carl Jansson. We are at Carousel, the leader is in a Pflanzgarten. So we are once again in the last lap as you can see. And that's the fight here for fifth and sixth position between our racing team Heusingfeld and Core Sim Racing. And drivers it's Adam Christodoulou and Karl Jansson.
again. Christa Dudu has to defend very much. Also because of his damage in the front. Yes. The flow around the car is lost, so there's much more drag. That's a chance for Janson as well as the lapping cars. Wow. As we say, uh, then Chris Duhl has to open the door. Karl Jansson can make it through, and now he just let him pass. And a spin for Adam Chris Duhl. Another spin then for Adam Chris Duhl. While we see here, Marle Racing Team now crossing the line. And the winner of the TÜV Rheinland. Three hour race is. Marle Racing Team, Sami Matidrogen and Alex Arana in front of BS Competition number 89. And Team BMW Bank, Kai Kaschube is the driver together with Bruno Spengler. In third position, we have a team, BMW Team Great Britain, Alessandro Bico and Jesse Krohn. That's that car here. Going through. The chicane. Adam Christodoulou just crossed the line and uh, in sixth position. And behind there, it's Haupt Racing Team, his teammate, AM Solutions, Dirk Müller in seventh. Turning the car with Florian Denzler. Here we can see Dirk Müller in seventh. What a race it was. It looked like that it will be decided by strategy, but a lot of fuel saving. Made the way for another victory of Male Racing Team after pole position in last in the last race and a little bit of bad luck. Now they are winner of the third round of the DNLS here. That's the leader of SP3T, SimRC. Here's the team. And Felix Luding is the driver. And he's sharing the car with Jürgen Frank. Second position car in SP3T is Team Heusingfeld. And that's uh, Patrick Kubinci and Marcel T. Together with Sven Klatzel and Michael Schöttler. And Steen Ledger from Frozen Speed we had in the interview. They are in third position together with Lars Bohl. He is driving here, the Audi RS3 LMS. And uh, the first one Is the winner of the uh, SP10 class. Uh, the first one we have already here, Marius Golombek, winner, as I say, of the SP10 class um, in, uh, in their Porsche Cayman GT4 Club Sport. Uh, Marius, congratulations, first of all. And um, how was the race for you guys? 
Uh, thanks, Jan. Yeah, perfect race, to be honest. Um, happened, happened so fast. I mean, it just takes a little mistake from the BMW guys in the first stint. And then you get one chance to kind of break away, and uh, it just worked perfectly. Car was great all day, um, despite having more kilos than ever, so the BOP just keeps hitting us. But um, everything worked uh, perfectly today. So now, um, after a little bit of uh, unlucky race uh, in the last round, um, you are uh, now uh, back um, in, in the, the, the real championship. So um, uh, with the win. Um, so how, after halfway through the season, um, how is the, the strategy and how is the tactic for uh, the last or the second half of the season? Yeah, just as you say, um, we needed to win today um, because ISO has two wins and they've been doing a great job all season. And we did that today, so um, just to keep us in contention, we, we need to keep on winning, uh, as simple as that. If they keep on, keep on being this strong, they're always in contention for a win. And even if they come second, we still need to win every round from now on. So um, it's, it stays very interesting and um, I'm definitely glad also Pascal did some practice over the winter and found a couple of tents here and there and it, it really paid off today, so I'm really happy about that. Coming from uh, the NLS, maybe a little further down next week, um, uh, another, another endurance race. Um, are you guys also uh, sharing cars in uh, the 24-hour at Daytona? Yeah, it's going to be Pascal and me, as well as uh, Carl Janssen, who drove the GT3 car today, and Oscar Mangan, who drove the TCR in the first round. So that's uh, going to be a really good effort as well. And we've been practicing more for Daytona than for DNLS, to be honest, and <laughs> I can just hope that pays off as well. Okay, yeah, but if, if he, the, the win is the, the result here with, uh, with uh, a little less practice, then everything should be fine for next week. So thank you very much. Uh, Marius Golombek together with Pascal Stix, um, winner of the SP10 class here at the third round of uh, the DNLS. Thank you very much and congratulations once again, Marius. Thanks, Jan. So that's the, uh, uh, that's the SP10 class and uh, coming into the uh, uh, we just went through um, as we have to find out a little bit what the German stream is doing um, we have uh, one of the winners of uh, the um, of the SP9 class it's uh, Sami Mati Trogen so thank you very much uh, uh, Sami Mati um, uh, congratulations first of all together uh, with uh, Alex you made it um, um, after some difficulties in the last round and so on uh, pole position um, how was the race for you? Because it looked like uh, it's going to be kind of strategy race. Yeah, it was you know, all about the strategy. We knew that uh, we had a good tire wear in the race, so we decided to go quite a uh, long stint and also a bit different strategy than that. So I think it worked quite well and uh, yeah, it was a really good race overall. Um, as we had the BMW M4 GT3 the first time here at Nord Life at the DNLS, um, how was the car to drive? And uh, just let us know how it is um, after you. Uh, you've been doing quite a lot of um, racing in the uh, Audi R8. Um, you jump now into the BMW. So just let us know how it is to drive that car here. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit different than Z4. I mean, it's uh, much more like a modern car than Z4. I mean, Z4 was really old. Ready, so I mean, I, I like M4, it's, it's a nice car, nice car to drive, and uh, also, yeah, I have driven a lot of, lot of races with our Audi, and uh, yeah, I, I mean, uh, all the cars are a bit different, but uh, overall, I, I, I like all these these cars. So, uh, Z4, was, Z4 was also nice, so I mean, but uh, the end of it looks that the end of M4 looks much, much more modern than Z4, so, so it's nice. We have a couple of races uh, to come. Um, I just had Marius Golombek in the interview right uh, before you. Um, next week we have uh, Daytona. Uh, you, I guess, and uh, I, or better say, I, I know you will be there, right? Yes, yes, I will be there. So, um, what car uh, are you driving, and um, what what is the what is the um, goal for sure to win? But uh, uh, just let us know a little bit about next week. Yeah, so I will be driving with the BMW M8 BTE car and of course aim as always is to win, so let's see what happens. 
Thank you very much, Sami Wati Drogen, together with uh, Alex Arana, um, winner of uh, this uh, this uh, round of the uh, DNLS. Uh, thank you very much and congratulations once again, Sami Mati. Thank you. So that's the uh, winning team of the SP9 and uh, we just wait for the rest uh, or while we wait for the rest of the uh, drivers, we have a look on the results. Marlow Racing Team wins this uh, race while we see the names are not correct. So it's Trogen and uh, Arana won winning the race. BS Competition, Heinrich and Sepanen in second um, team BMW Bank, Spengler and Kashube in third. BMW team, Great Britain. Here we have Krohn and Biko. So that's just mixed. Uh, Chorusim Racing, Janson and Zetsas in a fifth. Mercedes uh, or Haupt Racing Team, HRT Heusingfeld. Um, Chris Dulus and Kowski in Hutzfeld. That's uh, the sixth position. Seventh, Haupt Racing Team, AM Solution, Müller and Denzler. Eight, RN Vision, Keep on Racing. Piana and Belet Ziotis. And in ninth, Nimas Race Cars Esport Rau and Nimas. So that's the um, top nine at the moment um, in the SP9 class. And uh, we, while we are again waiting for drivers coming into pit lane, finding their way to um, our. Um, our room here, um, Schnitzel, Al, Marcevic, Hertling, Haupt Racing, Team Bildstein, Philpott and Giusa, Manfilter, Team HTP Winward, Dean, Sedwig, Iloma, ERC, Powered by FSP, TÜV Rheinland, Käferlein, Monst, äh, Montermann and Freulen, Springhock and Beckmann for MNJ Performance and Jona Motorsport Club äh, Zalewski Spieker HR Team bei Five Star Franz Riedmüller Fritz BS Competition Nummer 90 Fisser and Fully. That's the result in SP9 while well, we have another driver here Elias Sepanen uh, with us so Elias congratulations second position together with Laurin uh, in uh, The um, um, in the beginning of the race, uh, it looked uh, promising for you guys, but then um, uh, the uh, the guys from uh, the crew from Mala Racing Team uh, made uh, their way um, around you. Uh, so, so let us know what what happened. Why um, did you uh, in the end um, had to uh, let them go um, and just finish second? Maybe he cannot hear us. Hmm. Well, maybe we have to find out that Elias can hear us as well. Looks like that uh, he can he cannot hear us at the moment, but uh, maybe we will fix that, and uh, and we will come back to him later as well. And uh, while we just saw uh, nice pictures, kids having fun also here with sim racing and uh, when daddy is driving, we uh, will have a short overview over the... Uh, other classes as well while we are still waiting for Elias Sepana. Now it's working. Yes. You just tell me. Yeah, perfect. Elias, uh, congratulations, first of all, um, to second position. But uh, the question was, um, in the end, in the beginning, it looked quite promising um, for, for you guys. But uh, then you, you lost a bit of, um, of pace against the Marley Racing Team. What, what, what happened there? Um, yeah, uh, the side of the race was really good. Lauren managed to get, get a pole position and we led the first stint, but then, uh, um, we struggled a bit with the tire wear 
I think we were trying to double in the tires, but it didn't really work. So I think that uh, we we had to do a little early pit stop than it was supposed to be. I think that um, that uh, took us back a little bit. And then uh, I think also um, we got some damage from the from some curb on the track. Uh, so I think that caused caused us a bit of time. But I think in the, overall it was quite quite okay race. Especially it was really really superb qualifying from Lauren. Uh, managed to get pole position. So and. Uh... No, Lauren just he he just uh, sent me a text message uh, right right before he had to jump into the car um, that uh, he he thought you maybe have to do you maybe have to do another pit stop for refueling as uh, the team uh, of as your teammates uh, from a uh, team uh, BMW Bank had to do Kai Kashuba uh, but in the end it worked out so did did you save and Lauren save enough enough fuel or why did you um, um, not have to go into pit lane once again. Uh, Yeah, uh, we actually, in the end, we actually had a extra lap of fuel, so it turned out uh, quite quite good for us. Um, yeah, Kai, Kai and Bruno needed to do still extra stuff at the end, so we managed to get a uh, get the place back from them. And um, and yeah, I think the race also went extra lap than than we thought. Perfect. Thank you very much for that um, detailed information, Elias. Uh, thank you very much. Um, as I know, you will drive as all, maybe all the others uh, next week at Daytona. So crossing fingers for you and also for the um, uh, second half of the championship here in uh, the NLS. Uh, thank you very much, Elias, for taking the time and uh, good luck. Yeah, thanks a lot. So Elias Sepanen, the... Uh, um, co-driver, second driver of the number 89 car BS competition, sharing the car with Laurin Heinrich. So, um, we uh, having a look uh, as Martin Ascher is still in the German uh, interview. We wait, maybe wait for him also to hear what he can say about his race winner of the Cup 2 class because there we had uh, all the uh, close fights and so we wait just that they finished and uh, yeah but uh, what an interesting race uh, here we see the result of Cup 2 class um, and uh, As I say, Asher Racing with uh, Martin Asher himself and uh, Jirak uh, in uh, first position. And behind there is Butler Pahl, Norwegian Bushman and H2 Performance SRT. While VNS uh, just dropped back because of their, um, of their uh, uh, penalty they got. And uh, yeah, so uh, um, that's uh, that was uh, the... The result there. I'm just trying to get all the drivers in here to have a uh, talk with him. It's all with them. And uh, so we just wait. I just ask for uh, Asha. So here, Butlerpal, Novik Bushman, H2 Performance SRT, Asmus and Lippert, MRS TT. At, at Deutsche Payment, Bodin, Otterbach, VNS, e Motorsport, Aras Fabri and Last. And we have uh, the winner of these uh, of this class, of the Cup 2 class, uh, Martin Ascher sharing the car with uh, Jirak. Um, another uh, very good result for you. Congratulations, Martin. Uh, how, did the, how did the race went? Yeah, thanks, Jan. Uh, it was a really, really tough race, to be honest. From start to finish, uh, very, very tight battles. I'm totally exhausted, but uh, we are very, very pleased uh, to finish first today. 
And we, we, we had you guys for almost um, a half of the race or maybe two thirds of the race in the stream as you were fighting so close together with uh, VNS uh, Motorsport, with uh, MRS uh, and so on. So um, that was a very close fight. Um, how was that for you? Um, did you sometimes, because it looks sometimes you can go faster, you were waiting for the right moment. How was mm. that fight for you? Yeah, not really. So we were pushing from the first lap onwards and I, I couldn't build a gap um, on, uh, on the, the Döttinger Höhe. Sometimes we um, didn't push as hard that we can manage the timing to, to re-overtake again. But uh, yeah, it was so intense. And then finally we miscalculated the total amounts of laps. So we had to pit again <laughs> and... Yeah, I think in the end it was like two or three seconds to win the race. You guys are very strong now in the championship. So um, we are very much looking forward as we go into the second half of, champi of the championship now. And uh, we uh, love to see, especially in Cup 2 class, uh, these close fights. So uh, thank you very much, Martin, for taking the, the time for that short interview and uh, crossing fingers for you guys um, for the next races. Yeah, thank you very much. See you next race. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. So that was uh, Martin Asher from Asher Racing um, sharing there, as I say, the car uh, with Markus Jirak. In the uh, um, SP3T class, I tried to get f the winners of the race, but uh, they seem to disappear already from here. Uh, so uh, unfortunately, it looks like we are not able to have a chat with them uh, but uh, yeah in uh, in the end it's uh, Tim RC SP3T team Felix Luding is uh, one of the drivers Jürgen Frank is the second driver they won the SP3T class and um, again they are building and now they are um, yeah, they're building up their uh, gap and uh, their uh, championship chances. Um, it, it, it will be very much interesting um, to see um, how that is going on for the next couple of races as we uh, head into the next race, uh, already mentioned in uh, the beginning of, uh, of the stream, uh, in uh, February and the last race we will have in uh, Uh, March. So um, yeah, we are we are over half time now, and uh, already seen so many close races, close fights, and um, I just see that Jürgen Frank came back um, for the German interview. But uh, maybe we wait for him quickly to have a chat with him, and uh, until he went through in the German stream. That's it um, until here from uh, the uh, TÜV Rheinland three-hour race. And what a race. It was a very nice and strong debut from the BMW M4 GT3, but also not only from this car, also from the cars of a Lamborghini um, while we here last but not least see the result of the SP3 T-Class CMRC as I said Jürgen Frank and Luding winning the race in front of Team Heusingfeld T. Kubinci Klatzel and Schöttler Frozen Speed Full Send Racing in a third position ledger and ball right behind there it's sim rc low grip racing raceline sim sports benina racing team and in eighth position power team racing that's the top eight in sp3t and congratulations there to jürgen frank and felix luding 
for another strong race. And uh, maybe we can have Jürgen Frank quickly with us here for a couple of words, still in the German booth. And uh, let's see if he can find the time, find the way to our little channel here as well, to the English stream for you. And while we are waiting for Jürgen Frank, we can have one more time a look onto the calendar um, when we are back here at the Nürburgring Nordschleife on the 20th of February for the NEMAX three-hour race. And... Uh, there we meet back here. So in about four weeks, we we meet here again. Then on the 6th of March, Lego, Lego Technik three-hour race uh, as we have Lego Technik um, as the new partner from DNLS. But first of all, not a new partner, but Jürgen Frank is here. A congratulations, Jürgen, for you and Felix for winning the SP3T class. Another strong race from you. Um, how did the, the race win? Because it was a, a lights to flag race. Hey, yeah, thank you very much. Um, at the end, it was not that easy, at least uh, for the first two hours. Um, at the start, uh, f starting phase, we had a bit of luck uh, because we had two cars in the front row with our team. And uh, the other car had a few fights with the guys behind. So we could manage uh, a gap of like two seconds, which was just at the border to the draft uh, to Heusingfeld. And um, uh, Felix could uh, keep that pace. But uh, suddenly Robbie Foley in the GT3 uh, cost uh, the team Heusingfeld a second. So then we could... Uh, get away a little bit now we are over half time in uh, dnls two more races to go we just saw uh, the calendar here in the stream and uh, so now um what is uh, we are very much looking forward um, to to you guys so thank you very much jürgen uh, for that uh, uh, the uh, little uh, insight and thank you very much and congratulations once again yeah thank you very much and thanks for the good commentary Thank you. Bye-bye. See you.
Dum, dum, dum.